Welcome to Wednesday, welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, where we play new games on classic consoles, specifically the Atari 2600. And uh, you better be watching at 60 frames a second, because that's what we broadcast at, because you'll literally be missing half the show. That's right, happy Wednesday. 60 frames a second, you have to watch all 60 of them, or else you miss them. Uh, welcome everybody to the show here in Vancouver. It is very snowy yeah the whole city is basically shut down there's a, probably about a foot of snow yep which never happens here where i'm yeah. from edmonton alberta well, this is nothing. eight months out of the year <laughs> but here it's and people are losing their minds just because car crashes because, because it doesn't happen we don't have snow plows nobody has snow tires yeah because why would you buy them for you gotta maybe understand it'll a foot. Snow? like this is seriously yeah. what we're dealing with like yeah like it's, it's 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 pretty crazy. All the schools are shut down. Probably people in areas that get snow are like a foot of snow. Yeah, <laughs> we don't but, even blink for that. But there's no infrastructure. Yeah, it's nothing here. Even so. trying to get to James's place was interesting. <laughs> I, I honestly like crossing the street this morning. I was I just took my time because people were like skidding <laughs> as they're doing corners. I was like I'm yeah. waiting for this red light and then, and then I'm making sure that no one's gonna hit me. That's very, very wise. But there's probably not too many cars. No, it's dead. And I the think... cars that are out there are in the ditch. Yeah. <laughs> and then poor bus drivers, man. That's the, the unsung heroes of they this do world. What they, yeah, do what they can and try and keep the bus on the road and keep it going. Luckily, they're very heavy and keeps you down. they get a bit of traction. Yeah. Um, so we got five games today. Uh, we've got Steam. T We're actually doing a little bit of a focus on a, a programmer here named John K. Harvey, ah, AKA, John. aka Propane 13. Wow. Um, because He's, we played his and game. And man, I'm barbecuing through this winter, so me and Propane are, <laughs> are right. good friends. Propane and Propane Accessories. Um, so we've got three games uh, Steam Tunnel Bob from 2008, Pressure Gauge from 2000, Pressure Gauge 2 from 2000. Um, and uh, we're also going to be playing uh, Tumble Temple. We're going to be catching up with that game a little bit. I've, I've played none of these, which is really exciting. Oh, I think that's some of them are recurring on the show. Like yep. I know the last one. Yep. Um, and Ninja Sky in Low Res World, that which we one. have played a couple times, at least once. Yeah. Um, and this is the 2020 work in progress, um, I think, update of it. Uh, yeah, we, we have already played it. This is the same version as last time, but I want to get to the end because I was that close. By my count, but we'll get to that. Um, I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers: Cafe Man 2D, Captain Classic, Charles and Check, Coconut 81, Gretem's Ground Trooper, I suppose, Johnny WC 23, Carl G. Croco 2600, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Nathan Storm, RC 70, Repentless VG, Six Sweet Sir, Cat Legs, Spartan 581, Spiceware, S. Ramirez 2008, The D Train, Welshman 89, Tiki Dan K, and Zach Skol Scolero. And I think that is the longest list we've ever had yeah. at least tying it's thank like, you oh, i was huge it's i remember when off the screen there i remember when there was like three names <laughs> I, yeah. I remember those days it's so beautiful oh. to have oh, all yeah. this stuff i think it might be or it might be tied for the most i think it's 25 or something wow you can count them up um arena foot welcome uh d train 37 oh before i say that and you can support the show and get your name added to the list and try and get it off the screen to force me to find a new way to display yeah. the names. Um, if you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to your Twitch Prime and click subscribe for free. And of course, make sure you just follow the show so you can be notified when we come on. And Dan ABC has been doing an like, amazing um, contribution yeah, by posting on this. Show. Yeah, it was the Atari Video Club Facebook group. Yeah. Um, it, I, it, that's just amazing that yeah. we that he's like doing his thing Thank and helping you for spreading spread the word. Because yeah. if we can find one or two more people, it's amazing. And and also we just always appreciate that you guys are here. Yeah, because you might be finding people that may like what we do here, but just don't know about it. Yet. Absolutely. Um, so make sure you uh, follow on Twitch and YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, so you can find out the most up to date. Especially if we're late one day, because the other day we were late. And so I updated all the places so that people knew that we're going to be going on a little late. Um, so I want to thank all the people that are joining us live Ooh. in the chat. D Train 37, Arena Foot, Trey Guy, Dan AVC, and Thrust 26, and RC70, I said that, Isposta, and all the people that lurk 
and don't type anything. The, and that would be me if, if I were on a, on a stream. I would love that people post, but I'm just letting you guys know that I'm a lurker. Yeah, because what can, I do. So you can just watch. Your name does show up in a list. I read it once. People freaked out, and I will never read it again. Yeah, yeah. You want to <laughs> keep them secret because, you know, you don't want to out them. And, um,. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's cool. You get to go to the party and you can just have your drink in the corner and the corners, people watch. watch the festivities. And then when you're ready to go home, you just go home. You yep. know, don't have to participate in the little uh, in the little chats that are happening. You know, you can listen to the music, enjoy the you time, look at the decor, pet the dog. If you feel like talking, <laughs> you can. Yep. <laughs> um, so mail news and feedback. Uh, Nathan Strum posted a great write up oh, wow. on creating manuals. For your homebrew games, because I actually had two two people come to me saying, "Hey, I'm making a game. Um, is there is there a template for manuals out there? Like um, you know the little manuals you get with the with the game." Yeah. Um, and uh, so, if you're a developer and wondering what the next step is, the, the, podcast the for introverts. introverts. It's true. Those, you guys are my people, man. <laughs> I love it. That's right. Uh, VHZC has joined us. Welcome. Oh, hey, buddy. Um, so he outlines everything uh, from the layout to the template sizes and comments on some of his personal preferences for making uh, manuals. Yeah. So I would definitely check it out. Actually, I should post it into the chat. I should do more of that, especially for things that um, I only have the links to accessible. Because I know that ArenaFoot was helping last episode, but, you know, there we go. And Dan VC says ZPH is featured on his website, atari-video.club. The second slide image on the main page as well and be on the calendar on that website so people will know when we're broadcasting. And we do broadcast fairly, like, very regularly. Wednesdays and Fridays, the same time. Um, and you can check that uh, schedule out on the forums in the Atari Age forums or at Atari Video Club as well. Yeah, that's so cool that that's a thing that's popping up. Yeah, th so thank you for spreading the word, Dan. Um, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, something called concern trolling. Ooh. And have you ever heard of what no, concern trolling I, I, is? No, I feel like I'm excited about where this is going, <laughs> though. I feel like I'll have an opinion. I don't know what it is yet, though. Um, concern trolling. Let me give you a definition. So I had to look it up. I know what it is, but I wanted a, a good definition. Concern trolling involves someone opposing an idea or a, a viewpoint, yet acting like they're an advocate for the cause. Ah, yes. A concern troll offers undermining criticisms under the guise of concern. Their goal is to sabotage the, c the cause <laughs> being discussed and to inspire doubt amongst group members. This occurs in groups rallied around a particular issue, especially in political parties, and the goal of concern trolling is to cause dissent within a community. And uh, this has come up uh, in the Atari Age forums, is what I'm specifically referring to. And we've discussed this topic before, and I just want to go over it again. Uh, but do you think that this is really the best thing right now? The best thing... I love, I love how you always know a scary <laughs> sentence begins with, I really love what, what what's doing. going on. I'm a big fan. <laughs> but uh, but, but. Um, I think it's an interesting topic. Um, so we've discussed this topic before, but I think it's worth going over again. Yeah. Um, so recently there are some people posting it. I usually don't get into drama, but I think this is really important. Um, uh, recently there's people posting in the Atari Age forum, though, once again... I brought up the notion that games using technology not invented in the Atari mm. era need to be treated differently uh, than games made with hardware that were uh, available from 1977 to 1992, the sales lifespan of the Atari 2600. So really what they're doing is gatekeeping. I'm glad that you guys are bringing up. That didn't sound like you were <laughs> the last sentence. Um, oh no, man, he's just—he's given a good example of concern oh, trolling. He was just, right. He was oh. letting, that's what he was doing, man. He's letting us know what that's the funny. He's being ironic. Yeah, he's given a, hes given an example, and, he, and like... it worked well because I got concerned. <laughs> they got oh, RC70 knows what I'm talking about. Um, uh, so this is also an example of gatekeeping, mm -hmm. and you know what you know what gatekeeping is is like. I know what's best for this, yeah. and uh, this should be the way it is, and you people doing it this way, sh it shouldn't be done this way. I know best for what this is. Um, the idea kicked off this time because uh, 
uh, in terms of arm chip games, like... <laughs> this is, do you know it's got a good one, too? My concern is that these kinds of discussions will be the end of this show. <laughs> my concern... Oh, oh so good. Sorry. Keep That's going. funny. Um, the games that made with an arm chip should be labeled Ooh. On, Ooh. on the covers of, of the things. And they said they should be labeled because people should be where be made aware that is being you that it was made using non-normal hardware Interesting. it's like oh there's there's new hardware in this that was not available before and this is is new this isn't the classic atari that you're used to this is something different this is not part of what we're used to this isn't the classic stuff that we love uh, the con concern trolling came in when he was just looking out for the best interest of unsuspecting buyers oh, of yes. homebrew games, so that they know that the program was not is not using retro hardware to make the game. They also implied that the developers are using ARM chips have an unfair advantage, and are betraying the legacy of classic retro style games of the system. Um, some points that were brought up in the discussion. Um, games are actually already labeled in the Atari mm. Age store. Uh, they, they label the size of the game, the bank switching scheme, whether they're using the melody board, whether they uh, take advantage of the Atari Vox. So they already are labeled. So his point was, his main point was dismissed immediately. It's like, it's already labeled. So Absolutely. The, 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 the way you're injecting uh, uh, doubt into this community and, and, and trying to divide us into into arm people and non-arm people in classic versus new homebrew versus what is retro is 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 gone um, and and the fa the fact that you know making retro games or making arm games arm games are not easier to make because they're using faster hardware um, the basic uh, core function of the 2600 are not bypassed as you're still using the VCS to output the video and the audio of the game. Thrust got another good one. It's, I don't like how you dismiss, in my opinion, valid concerns. Because <laughs> <laughs> these sentences give me stress. That's, they're <laughs> so good. <laughs> I don't like how you... Um, yep, yeah, uh, Thrust was involved in the yeah. discussion, and he had some, some concerns as well. Yeah, we'll get man. to everything. And you can type them in the chat. Um concern goes hand in hand with drama queening yes it's true it does um in fact you not only have to be an advanced programmer in assembly but also in c coding to and have an intimate knowledge of the hardware and you have to have an intimate knowledge of the hardware also to to make the games using the core hardware if not more if you're going to make these huge impressive games by squeezing out every last bit of the atari's 2600 hardware wait a moment other homebrewers are not using p2p computers as a development platform that's another one point that i'm going to get going to get to um also so these are my points um systems through many eras of consoles kept adding to the technology as it moved on uh dpc chips used in pitfall 2 for the atari 2600 pokey chip for the 7800 which is a sound enhancement chip MMC mappers for the NES, Super FX chip for the SNES, and 32X for the Genesis, etc. So stuff kept being added to these systems as time went on, which made sense to keep their keep them alive, keep them going, keep them pushing forward. And that is just what's happening naturally. Yes, the old Atari is gone. There is a new Atari, but they're not the same company really. They're like a holding company. Um but technology always got pushed as the lifespan of, of the systems kept going. Uh, the advances in cart technology throughout the production of the Atari 2600 were not released by Atari themselves, but by Activision with the DPC chip and also the largest cartridge sizes of 64K with the Mega Boy by the Brazilian company Dynacom. So why would the state of the Atari Corporation be the dictator of when the cutoff of technology is dictated? So, yes, Atari start, stopped putting out the Atari systems, but it's the other companies that were pushing the new hardware. Like, the DPC chip had nothing to do with Atari. It was Activision and David Crane that made the DPC chip. 
So why does this, why is new hardware somehow tied to an era or tied to whether a corporation is still around or not? Added through the game card, not added to the base console. Yeah, all these add-ons were in cartridges. And same with this new technology. It's in the card. It does not alter the system whatsoever. You're still buying a cartridge from a store, putting it into your system, and you play a game. What's in the cart, the average person doesn't know. Oh, lost my... Oh, no. Yeah, we'll get the... Um, uh, I, and I get the same, if not more, enjoyment from some 4K games as I do from ARM chip, 32K games. So, um, excellent 4K games such as... Um, Amoeba Jump and Balloon Trip, as a case in point, those are amazing games. And it's all down to the creativity of the programmer, not necessarily the hardware you put in it. Like, Absolutely. you can make a terrible, terrible um, DPC Plus game with 64K, and, and it's just not fun to play. But somebody can come out with Amoeba Jump, which is 4K, and just mops the floor <laughs> with with a lot of games, right? Um, so modern consoles without a cart port, cart port must cannot be updated. Well, that's the case in point. Is like who is the, who is the gatekeeper, and yeah. why are they the gatekeeper, and why can't things be updated? Why and I get to that as well. Why can't I update my Atari Twenty Six Hundred with a, a composite output or an S video, an RGB output? I modded my Atari. That doesn't negate me from enjoyment or enjoying the Atari or playing games. <clears throat> like who, who physics is the gatekeeper. Yeah. The speed of the electrons through it. Uh, then there's added speech with Atari Vox, and that's adding hardware to the base console. Yeah, the, like who, who says where the cutoff is? And, and who says what? Like everybody should make their own decision. Yeah. Really. Of where they like games if you like classic games and only up to 4k then you play the 4k games and stop poo-pooing on everybody else's parade um and other people can enjoy you know the cdfj games and and 120k and you know 128k and penult yeah and this man. expansive world of ultima uh inspired uh rpgs Everybody can update anything as they like. You're missing the point. Uh-oh. What, what, the, the point they were trying to make is that they wanted things labeled. Yeah, so that people... On, on the, on the boxes. Yeah. So, so that so people that... know either whether it's not a classic game, which was the original posters thing, or that this game is using <clears throat> advanced hardware beyond what was normally installed back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. But it's the underlying reason behind the labeling. Who is the label for? Is, mm, is the label for the developers to brag? Or is the label for consumers to warn them? And why yeah. are they warning them? What, what is the purpose beside... Informed. And, and that would be the prerogative of the developer. I use these technologies. They can say that they did or not. <clears throat> Every game back in uh, the Atari 2600 day, they didn't say, this is a 2K game. This is a 4K game. This is an 8K game. Some bragged that they put 32K on it. Some didn't, you know. I mean, there was only one uh, 32K game ever put out. There was one 64K game. Some let them know. Some didn't, you know. Does that extend to what uh, programming techniques were used? Um, should you label, I use this brand new subroutine that has never been done before? Um, and I think it still also falls on the side of, if you want to put it on, put it on as a developer. If you don't want to put it on, don't put it on. And the average consumer <clears throat> buying these games, I would say is more informed than the average person if they're buying homebrew games for an Atari 2600. They're probably into the system and they know a bit. But if they're uninformed about this kind of thing, putting that that little sticker on or that, you know, this is a DPC plus or this is CDFJ or this is an ARM processor yeah. inside, are they going to understand what that means anyway? Is it going to buy make them buy it more or buy it less? 
And we can also uh, have an empty 2600 and put a Raspberry inside. It's very true. You could. That would completely change the Atari and you can emulate it. It's like it's, like, it's open. But I, I just... People love putting Raspberry Pis in things. Yeah, I made a Atari cartridge with a Raspberry Pi Zero in it. And, and it just had like the uh, USB ports and an HDMI port. And it uh, you could play Atari games inside an Atari cartridge. And that was it. And somebody took that even further. And you could plug joysticks. Wow. Right into an Atari cartridge. And it was the Atari. But um, it was, it's, it's an interesting discussion. Um, some other, my, some other points. When you enjoy a movie, um, this relates to us. When you enjoy a movie, do you care what kind of camera they used or how much they paid for a location? Or what kind of sound equipment well, This is a very used. interesting point for us bringing up, which I think is valid. It's like when you hear something like, this would have been a mega seller back then, and people compare modern hardware with what was available back then, this sucks that potentially overshadows the work of the developers back then. Which Does is, it? Which has, you know, it's an interesting thing it, because I, I do like that perspective in that, you know, it's it, it, the same thing happens in, in films when we look back on these early films. We used to yeah. call them primitive cinema, yeah. but it's also like these were the forerunners. These were the people who were like the best they could do at that point. So it's that thing where it's like you're, you are right in, in that way. And I think it's like we don't want to take away from... Uh, what the folks were doing uh, back in the day, but at the same time, it's also great that we have new stuff that's being created and and a kind of yeah. a new like uh, thing you're push, always pushing the limits, and and cinema is like that too. You're always pushing the limits, and, and do, you, do, you, do you not? I would think there's an understanding yeah. that newer things are would always be pushing it further and further. More RAM, you know, a 4K camera, six, eight, yeah. 16K cameras now. You know, we have. Huge surround sound system, Dolby Atmos, and it's and, and it's good to not yeah. take away from and uh, remember that that, that that these folks who were making these things initially mm -hmm. were working at the cutting edge, and that to not look at yeah. those as they suck or they were bad oh, or any yeah. of that stuff. I think I think it's a good thing we have to be respectful of what those people were doing. And that of course Galagon compared to you know it's two different things, but I'm so happy yeah. both exist. Yeah, you know? combat versus Galagon. You know they're in different realms. Realms, but I think there's an understanding that yeah. the pack-in title, even on modern consoles, you take you know a PS4, the first uh, year of PS4 games are not going to be as good as the fifth or sixth year of Absolutely. PS4 game, and there is an understanding. I think there's a built-in understanding that there's always an evolution and a, a a higher comprehension of what you can squeeze out of the hardware as time goes on. There's a building blocks that people yeah. you, you 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 climb on the shoulders of giants. Is that what? That's exactly that's the right. Saying. It's like you get people take it farther and they build off of what other people do. I think one thing there's an old philosophical, like kind of like adage, which is it's the boat analogy. I'm sure I don't know if you heard this, which oh. is like if there's a boat and it goes out and you replace every piece of wood in the boat, is it still the same boat that started? In the same way that it's like. If we replace every aspect of the Atari, is it still an Atari? Is a very interesting thing where it's like if at a certain this that Raspberry Pi thing, it's like if you if we're playing it out of Stella and we're working, it, is it becoming something that is not what it was originally? And my opinion is like it's fucking dope that people are making games. I'm just stoked yeah. on the fact that you know. But it is an interesting problem, I guess. It's like if if you go out to your voyage to sea and all of a sudden you're like you know cutting up and making new things. It's like well. You maybe it is a different boat at that point, and is that okay? And then can you say that it's the same thing? It's kind of interesting. And, and really, what this was leading to Ooh. is Dianoid's point, and that's was in the in the topic, is that some of the developers are getting turned off. Ah, oh, yeah, that's um, a scary thought. It is, and and some of them did actually post that. Is like I'm I'm getting very dismayed. Yeah, not mostly with. A lot of what these people were saying, these concern trolls were saying, it's like, you know, this, this, people won't appreciate games that were made with just the core basics. People won't appreciate the 4K games to be lost in the shadow. <laughs> DJ, the ship of Theses reaches the target. I <laughs> love it so goddamn much. Um, Dino, it says, I think the concern of the AA topic was about some developers stopped making games because of arms, which yeah. I'm sure is true, but I guess there are other personal reasons to quit making games. 
Um, and, and you it, don't know with folks, right? Some people might be saying that things are going on in their lives and that's an excuse. Some people, that might maybe. be a real thing where they go, oh, I just feel like there's no stuff. And it's tricky because on one level, um, you, you know, we've introduced something new, which is these awards, and that does change some yeah. stuff as soon as you throw that in but at the same time it's also encouraging people to make new games so yeah. it's like the hard part about these things is like as soon as you kind of like have a competitive element you're gonna get new people but some people are gonna drop off it's just yeah. it's, it's like you can't have one without the other it's i mean a rough evolutionary kind of thing and i i know uh, andrew davy expressed concern last time this came up he was yeah. like I just can't take this. I don't like the way this is being perceived. I don't. I don't like the way that arm games are elevated above other ones because they can push the things so much. But then it, then he came out with Sabuco. Yeah. <laughs> is that how you say it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and and it's like unbelievable the innovation that he did with the the triple line coloring. Um, and I know Daryl Spice Jr. in that thread was also expressing um you know just dismay in in the way uh, people are you know maybe elevating uh these new games using the arm over non-arm uh games as well um and and uh, thomas yench as well because he he's made some unbelievable games not using anything but the basic processor on on the Atari 2600. Yeah. And I can see how but but I think I think in the end there's room for there's room for both. There's room for these people who want to challenge themselves making games using the core hardware that is contained inside the 2600. And there's room for people making these games with massive processors out on the on the cartridge as well. And I think the people making the games using the 6502 on the Atari 2600, feel that their work is not being appreciated Yeah, because they are pushing the, the absolute limits of what came out in 1977 and was available in 1977. Yeah, and at what point does it turn into a different ship, to use our metaphor, right? That's an yeah. interesting... But what, the, but when the... you start emulating the Atari on... Um, on other chips and through emulators and all of a sudden the whole Atari system is not even in the equation anymore. Yeah, and then it's and then it's and then it's just almost a new medium, which is so exciting but also kind yeah. of interesting that you start at point A and all of a sudden you're at point fucking Z and yeah. it's like, well, oh my god, well, how do we get here, you know? And I uh, I really hope that like all the work that everyone's doing in the community is encouraging people to keep going. It breaks yeah. my heart to think that some people might be discouraged to program stuff. But also, I think it's always really important to come back to those values of what is it that we're creating. And at the end of the day, a, a game comes down to design, gameplay, the choices you're making creatively. And it's really tricky because it's like, obviously, when you do like a port of a, of a title that's Super you're, you're going to yeah. get more hits, but at the same time, it's like, you know, what creates a beautiful game, like, you know, some of my favorite games, like, like I said, I'll come back to, like, Amiibo, like, it's like, that is, that's a beautiful game that's, yeah. that's wonderfully programmed, and it's, I don't, you know, it's, and it come what excites me about that is all the kind of, the core fundamentals of, of gaming, which is just, is this fun to play? Is this yeah. addictive? Is, is this, and you know, we can focus on technology, and that's key to what we're doing. Doing, but also we can sometimes let the technology overshadow the fact that you hand a controller to a, a 10 year old they don't care about <laughs> anything they care about whether or not they're having fun playing a game and that can be done on any system and and in any sort of manner and that's that's a design problem not a technology problem and i i i would disagree with um people saying that the efforts are go uh, not appreciated of the people making the games without the ARM processor. Because the people that are not into it and not interested, not tech savvy enough to understand what goes into those games yeah. are never going to understand what goes in those games. And the people in the Atari Age forums that read the threads, like all the developers that come here, are the ones that, and, and, and us as well, are the ones that are going to appreciate the hard work and skill that goes into the non-ARM games. Like, so I think the divide is 
going to be there and is always going to be there yeah. no matter if you label them or not label them either the person understands the technology or they don't and if they do understand the technology they're going to appreciate the skill that goes into the non-arm games um so i i think the appreciation is always going to be there and they're going to read the threads and there's going to be this developer community that loves both sides and it's really dismaying seeing the discouragement of of these incredible developers um throwing their hands up and saying i just can't take this i don't i don't yeah and and, and i i think it just comes from these people that are just digging raising these dra this drama and and trying to get people all riled up about this and i don't think there's any any real real concern like where where is all this coming from i think they're just m making up stuff to make people get riled up like do they actually know then like and it's probably the spectrum. Maybe some people are like straight up trolling and maybe some people this is a legitimate concern and it's hard to know sometimes the difference between those two when it when you get into this stuff. Yeah. And I think also this is a universal problem when it comes to groups and community. I mean, if we look at, you know, political theory for a second, it's like liberalism tends to push to the new and conservatism tends to try to remain traditional. And there's a healthy, in any culture, there's got to be a healthy tension between, because when you go somewhere new, there's obviously going to be things that are abandoned that shouldn't be abandoned. But then there's our times when you need to be careful about, you know, we need to keep those traditions. And it's tough because, yeah. you know, that, but that tension, that navigation is what we need. We don't need people who are just all oh, screw the system. System, you anarchy let's just only do the new and you don't need people yeah. being like well the world needs to no, remain no. exactly the same we can't have anything there needs to be room for both and i think there is and i think there's appreciation for both and thrust says the analogies brought in up in aa meet me believe that most people do not understand how huge the difference is and will they ever can you educate those people or should you be able to appreciate that some people understand those differences and those are the people you should concentrate on yeah. and go, yeah, there is a core audience that understand how difficult it is to make these games and you make it for those people and you make it for yourself because in the end, you're yeah. making these games for you and for people's enjoyment and you get out what you put into it and, and making these games and challenging yourself um, really in the end is the reward well yeah because what else is there is no other reward there, there is no monetary reward in this <laughs> no. believe me it's like this much so and and everybody here knows that there is no monetary reward that my that my arrogant view which makes me continue yes fight the system yeah that's well, right you, well you got to follow your own gut with this stuff and you got to put your yourself out there and stick to your values i, I always believe that when you get in yeah. the middle of a conflict come back to what you value what you what you believe in and try to continue to walk that way and not everyone's going to agree and also the tough thing is is as communities get larger sadly they get more divided and yeah. if, if you look at the planet earth i mean six billion people seven billion people i mean it's like a, it's lot, a lot of different opinions a lot of anthropologists believe that we were not supposed to be larger than 150 like it's like when you get larger than 150 people which i think this community as we grow might start to become more divided i mean it's it's we're seeing that all around the world right now and, but, I, and I hope not and i and i hope the fact that we play 4k unassisted games yeah and, man and arm games on the show shows that there is appreciation for both and there's tons of room for all these games and yeah and, and the d train says uh, on the thread i noted that galagon was basically being powered by a cray which is an old yeah. massive computer system put things into perspective that was an eye-opener for me and i felt like hearing people discuss it helped me learn about it and that's important too absolutely that this discussion keeps happening that people say and explain the difference between having an arm processor which opens up so many more possibilities for games and well i mean i know there's not too many people like me i i ride the fence and i enjoy everything that everybody does and i think it's a great contribution no matter how you make games yeah it all adds and there's no detraction every game that's put out is another good thing 
and I'm not going to get into anything political, but the political theory is an interesting thing to think about. I mean, right now, the internet is giving echo chambers, people are yeah. dividing off, and I think what's really tragic is that some of the discussions that used to be part of our culture, these conservative liberal debates of really that, that kind of binary of like, how far should we push into the new, what traditions do we keep? It's essential that we have those dialogues. I think a lot of the challenge in the world right now is people are not having those dialogues. They're picking their teams, and we're kind of spreading apart yeah. and I think that like as you said man it's so true it's like it's so good that you got to have that education about is yeah. having the eye opener and these dialogues need to continue to happen and we need to find a way to not um, you know a f divide each other that these discussions are important and the discussion is what's important it's not whether I'm right you're wrong you're it's important because you know in reality when you have things that are divisive chances are both are probably right and both are probably <laughs> wrong and that's the navigation yep. that needs to happen you know that's right i have a lot more but i think yeah. we've discussed <laughs> enough of that um, and, uh, and we took it to a good extent and I, the um, last thing i was going to say just in like this whole thing is like it's so important to come back to your values i mean like one yeah. thing is is remember that that the design of your game the story of your game the experience of your game that's what people will take away yeah. i mean the same with film you know, in the realm that we live in, it's about the story. It doesn't matter if it was shot on an iPhone or it was shot on a lens from NASA. Yep, it's <laughs> it's <laughs> it's about the the story of your game and the core core elements of your game that make it good or bad. It doesn't matter what you use to tell this story. We remember what happened to silent movies? A silent movie won an Academy Award a couple of years ago. Yeah. So that was another example of story overcoming technology yeah and you know musicals are winning oscars totally and those were dead for like 50 well 40 years right 40 50 60 years and uh, more relevant than ever <laughs> yeah so it, it is about the story and technology will push things further and that's a great thing and sticking to the core elements are also a good thing and understanding them and what those fundamentals are you know and it's and we see this on like i was bitching about star wars the other day and the tragedy of that is like you have all these goddamn special effects <laughs> and all this crazy yeah. shit but at the end of the day i'm like these people are not behaving in a way that makes sense and so it's interesting that even on a massive million frankly almost billion dollar <laughs> level yeah. people are still not able to get those foundational things because the reality is is making a a really great movie making a really great game it is it is those you though that compositional elements and those things are what are so challenging and it's so weird something like pac-man yeah. the design of pac-man it's crazy psychedelic whatever the fuck that is <laughs> mario whatever the hell that yeah. is mushrooms the, and these those, little goombas and, and the and growing and jumping and and that makes no sense but for whatever reason <laughs> that works and what's yeah. weird is that those have continued to work and we continue to play these mario games we continue to play pac-man and they're and they're actually they're fairly simple but yeah. there's an elegance to that and i think that like coming back to like because the, the game balance is so well done that people enjoy it yeah a lot and and, and they don't give a shit what it was made on the, you, the colors you used or yeah. it's about the gameplay and and i think it's important to like stay to that and even just dopey things like playing all these homebrew games like for example one game that was not a good game that has stayed in my mind is this goddamn pug farm game <laughs> and for whatever reason there's not a week that goes by where i don't think about pug farms and i'm like i want that to be but it's weird this shit the story that's... is so good and he just needs a little bit more game there's balance. something about like th these these cute pugs escaping from a fence and like that is the most simplistic thing and i don't know why that is like stuck in my brain and why I still think about these pugs on a it's weekly the basis. Baby Yoda thing. It is. It's the Baby Yoda thing. It's like, but That's it's the, weird. The core idea is so good. Pugs escaping from a farm, and you have to build a fence. It's, it's like. We, that's a game i'm fucking that's... in man <laughs> and goddamn uh amoeba jump is just a little boing boing mm. boing but i'm fucking play that goddamn thing <laughs> for hours and i'll like yeah. blink and be like oh me and james will be like I, oh i fucked one up we gotta get one more you know it's gotta make it to twenty thousand. <laughs> so you gotta like, always come back to those core values when yeah. when you get lost in the weeds sometimes because i want to see good games made yeah. by cool people i want people to keep doing this and i hope that like our work encourages people because yeah. that's what breaks my heart is that these dialogues or yeah. 
these kinds of things might discourage people. And also, the other reality is, is it's okay to move on to a new chapter in your life. If you're feeling yep. like you don't want to make games anymore, and yep. any and you're not stuff, getting enjoyment out of doing it, it's, it's it's fine. It's a loss. Sometimes you got to know the community, yeah. but it's it's you and it's your decision, and you have to enjoy it, uh, no matter where that enjoyment is coming from. Um, you you sh it's i know somebody said in the thread ignore these people yeah and i know it's hard and i know this is a, a thing that everybody says and and somebody said i can't i can't ignore them i try to ignore them but i can't it nags at me this this yeah. dissent that's happening that people aren't appreciating the games but you have to ignore it you have to have to work through that and do <laughs> what you enjoy and there's still tons of people out there that enjoy all these amazing games that are made with or without the arm. Yeah, man, and I'm like, um, I'm obviously, I'm not quite this generation, but I'm close to the generation that was born on the internet. I mean, the generation behind me is for sure the Instagram generation, yeah. the Facebook generation. I'm like, I got to live my life a little bit, and then it hit me when I was a teenager, but I feel like having grown up on the internet, I've learned to just block out the noise. Because yeah. it's, uh, sadly, it doesn't make you happy, and there's no limit to the amount of noise the internet will give you. And, yeah. and, and that's where you gotta, like, like stick to your values and stick to your people and a and, key and to happiness for, and look for positive yeah uh, positive conversations and and just ignore the negative ones and i've been on the internet for a long <laughs> time in a public way and there's always negativity coming towards you like i've been physically broadcasting my voice and image for 20 years on the internet since 1999 and there's always going to be negativity coming towards you and you have you have to just enjoy what you do and block that out and 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 focus on the positivity yeah and so rc70 i think i know where you're coming with this where you say where does one go to even learn about an arm assisted game is programmed it's a great point you know it's like but that's the tough thing when you when cutting edge technology happens it's cutting edge and yeah. given time it will be incorporated into whatever a system is so the reality is yeah. is maybe we need to do some work on that to maybe teach some people and educate people on how to kind of like yeah how to start to program these games, yeah. but isn't that a beautiful thought that maybe like, you know, we'll push this a bit farther, this gets incorporated in, and now we can get more information on how to do this, but there's always gonna be a, a little bit of a transitionary period. Yeah, Spiceware is working on um, a new programming language called Spicy, Spicy, Spice yeah. C, um, and he is also talking about CDFJ um, technology, so that's the place to go for cutting edge. Programming is Spiceware's blog, um, but he's taking a hiatus because of exactly this discussion. Um, he says he is, but he isn't. Oh, so you know. I'm, I'm sure he can. And, and, and folks will do it. what folks do. If so, yep. that's a somebody also pick up the ball if if he is not able to continue for now. But he's, and, he has some great um, great blogs about it right for the mo at the moment. Yeah, no one is forced to do anything, you know, and yeah. and just just keep trying to make a contribution if you can, whatever that is. I mean. That's that's it's a hard thing to do though, and and it's too bad that it's dividing people, but at the same time it's also exciting because we're having this discussion. And it is starting to navigate this thing that's very interesting, you know. Yep. But enough about that. You yeah, man, we gotta get continue the discussion in the in the forums and on the chat here. He is. He told me, he gave me an analogy and how stigmatizing he feels now, and that's really unfortunate that um, Daryl uh, feels that way. But, yeah, we uh, gotta we gotta send him some love. You send know? some positivity to him and encourage him because he is an incredible programmer, an incredible teacher um, of uh, programming for the twenty six hundred. Yeah, and um, what is it? There's like uh, uh, there's that movie Moneyball and Aaron's the great Aaron Sorkin line, which says the first one through the gates gets all the hits, <laughs> right? It's like the first yeah. person to do something new gets all the slings and arrows. And it's like, it it's yeah. and that is just so true. And that's the hard part about being the avant-garde or ahead of something is that you're going to get hit because people don't want to change. <laughs> yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go on to the games now. Fuck We've yes. been blabbing for 45 minutes and it's turned off all the people. It's a good one with the games. Get out with the games. In the YouTube chat. In oh, the YouTube sorry, Fred. We, we almost need to put time codes as to like when these <laughs> things start. Yep. Oh, people have called for that. That's a lot of work. Yeah, it's uh, too much. Someone in the comments can do it. Yep. 
Oh, you just scrub through the video and you can see when the first game starts. Oh, YouTube. yeah. That's one of the nice things about the way that the sort of Twitch uh, screen is laid. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it really easy to find out when we're you playing the games. Okay, yeah. Okay, so the first game we're going to be playing is Steam Tunnel Bob by uh, John K. Ooh. Harvey, a.k.a. Propane13. And this one was made in 2008. We're going to dive a little bit into his programming background. Oh, and man, look at this. Yeah, he's made this... Uh, psychedelic... Uh, kind of intro screen. It's a very funny, weird screen. It's like Aztec psychedelic. It's... Whoa, Actually, okay. Let's restart it again. Yeah, this is like a counting up, like he's adding one, and it makes this nice little uh, pattern using the PF wow. play field blocks. Yep. Oh, it almost looks even cooler when you do when that. it's purple. <laughs> yeah. And that's the debug color, so you can see that it's play field. So, uh, don't know if this has any sound, so Whoa. I'm just going to let you I just kinda move this figure guy. it out for yourself do I here. jump? Which one's... Uh... While well, I read about it. Oh, we got a little bit of sound. So I don't see just my bu buttons. Typical playfield pattern. Yes. So which ones are our guy? B Medieval a Mayhem is the reason I'm into home brewing. Yes, Medieval and Mayhem is an incredible game. Uh, so this is first post on May thirteenth, two thousand eight. Oh, oh, there's some sound. Okay, I'm okay. So we figured out what. Uh, this build is from May thirtieth. 2008. It's a 32k oh, cool. F4 game. Can I go down? Other yeah. games he has made. John K's Harvey's Equalizer, okay. Marble Madness. That's why I got into this guy because we we showed the Marble Madness game. Were you for there for this one? I think so. Okay. Well, whoa, 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 whoa! Does, does that mean I win or I? Yeah, you won. You found it. Um, so, whoa, we found Marble whoa. Madness. This is like Donkey whoa. Kong Country. Okay, I'm just. Or gonna... you're in a. Whoa, whoa! What that? This level's not done. Okay, okay, so uh, I don't do anything, it's just... He also made Mead and Santa, which we'll play next Christmas. Made Post-it Note, Pressure Gauge, Pressure Gauge 2, Steam Tunnel Bob, which we're playing, and Sticky Notes Cart. Oh, This is available in the Atari Age forums. So, about John K. Harvey. I was just a kid when I got my first console, a brand new Atari 2600. My favorite game was, as a kid was Pitfall 2. The sheer open-worldness of the game and the music were both amazing to me. Later in life, I eventually grew fond of the 7800 and the NES oh, no. and computer gaming. But the 2600 itself is the machine that sparked my interest in computers and programming. In my teenage years, I subscribed to the 2600 Connection and Digital Press Magazine and even joined the Stella email list, which was where people started to talk about programming for the system as a hobby. I got myself a 6502 programmer's book from the library sale. And when I was in my college years, I decided to make it uh, time to make something work. I like his little feet. Just... <laughs> his feet? Yeah, look at that. Look at the hilarious <laughs> feet. Yeah. Also, this guy is like from the 90s, man. He's, he's got his backwards. Back. He's, got some, he's got some tood. He's got some <laughs> it's, and, it's, and it's a pink hat, too. It's so great. Uh, Steam Panel Bob. This was my attempt at Pitfall 3. Uh, the story comes from a legend at my university where there was a man known as Steam Tunnel Bob who would roam around the steam tunnels of the university at night, replacing the light bulbs that had burned out. Wow. Whoa. I thought it was a great story element, so I used it. That is a great Whoa, story. Whoa, dude, I just got some shoes that makes me, like, so fast. <laughs> Whoa. Um, I wanted to make a puzzle game where there are multiple levels, a mine car scene, and there was a memorization element where switches that were toggled open up new pathways. Hence, the game was born. And the uh, steam tunnel turning reminds me of Toy Bazaar. Oh, this is see, this is getting interesting because now it's got a little bit more tactics to it because right. it's just trying to learn like what these patterns are. So what's this Get guy? Get off that screen. Uh oh. He kills your time. Oh no! I gotta run off. If this. my memory serves, I was working on the Steam Tunnel Bob and Marble Madness around the same time frame. Whoa. It was about then that I learned somebody had cracked the 7800 encryption lockout. Because of this lockout, no 7800 homebrews have been developed yet. Once that once that news reached my ears, I decided it was time to put the 2600 aside, focus on the 7800, since that brand was brand new territory. That's when I worked on Arkanoid and eventually Get Lost. But these are stories games for another time. In 2019, somebody has already made their own Arkanoid 7800, so my efforts will pretty much remain unfinished. However, Get Lost has been on my radar so. since 2001. Do I get it's to... Can I run through this guy? No. No. Okay. It's death. Rip. Um... That said, I did play Steam Tunnel Bob yesterday. It's more polished than I remember. So I may try and dig up its source code for fun. 
I was able to find and publish mean Santa source code. So who knows what the future could, future could bring. And that is what I love when we do focuses on games and developers. And they're like, hey, this game's not as bad as I thought it was. Let's keep going. And they start adding to it and then they finish it. And then, and then everybody has the benefit of a brand new game. Um, so let's read a little bit about the instructions now that you've completely figured it out. <laughs> yeah, I think I got a sense of this now. It's tricky, though, because I'm trying to figure out, like... And Thomas says, this is new to me, or I simply forgot it. Well, it's 2008, so it's a little ways back. Let's see if you said... Oh, nobody put any hearts on it. Hi, everyone. It's been eight years since my last game came out. So continuing forward, uh, blah, 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 blah. Goals. The main goal is to get to the mine cart. Okay, so what's interesting is like I gotta figure have you out. Have found the mine cart yet? In this oh one? yeah, man. So like, okay. see the mine cart's here. Okay. But what so you I got to turn off that. Yeah, that's my my next goal, and it's hard to like. I think it's that one, Ooh. but I don't quite know how to get you... to that one yet because I can't go through this guy. So I gotta kind of go up and over. I think. Ooh, many screens. Oh. S see, I gotta find a go way. Up and over that one. Um. So then like. You can down and turn. Have you turned that one yet? I did so what's interesting is like i think i think i already did this one it's just we got to just figure out which one is which the... one affects which one yeah it's just that's and Ooh, that's not it's easier said than done oh no see that doesn't do it but like no so that one doesn't do that one you have to turn off that one yeah i bet you there's like a whole process to this one trying to figure which is hopefully the one above it which is on the same screen so you have to get down so what's interesting is we have um these two here oh. so i need to sort of figure out like which one is which it's like a it's a puzzle it actually is almost like a memorization sort of deal and it's also possible that there's like more oh yeah. no that's it so and the but problem you can't see that one until, until you go around. Yeah, and so see it just it. takes like a bit of time, which is interesting. And you've got a time limit. So see, yeah, that this one I don't on. have, and then that one's done though. So, so maybe there. Finally, get to that one. Maybe there's something over here. Okay. Oh, now that one is still on. Yeah. So I... this one's a a paper game, I think. Yeah, you kind of have to figure out like what all these things so are. So maybe turn that one. Or would you be, were you able to get that? Okay, up? cool. So like, so this is the first one. So this is like, I'm going to just figure out what our default is first. Choose or help. So on. that one is, I'm just curious which one's which. So we need to turn that off for sure. I'm just going to see what this one does. I think, right. I think this one is, yeah. Do you think it's a one-to-one -one relation? I think so. Cause each, each switch is, is to, is to something so okay. like this one, for example, I think we'll turn off. Yeah. That. Yeah. And then now this can turn off. But wouldn't the goal to be turn off everything yeah, and, th and get to all of them? I think so. That's not a bad idea. Let's see so what let's happens. Let's just try that. Just, just turn off every single one of them. Yeah, because that's at least... At least it's something. Yeah, so Ooh. this this guy goes here. And then that's there. That's kind of the, the border of the wall. So see, this guy here is like... See, there's like that, right? It's a very interesting, it's a challenging one. Just, It's just more trying to figure out like, so then I don't think, um, okay, so I definitely can't do anything there. So once we get onto this lower level, this is the challenge is trying to figure out. So there's that, but like. You can't get past that, yeah. So wasn't it like way up and around? But this, and then it turned off that one. This is oh, interesting because <laughs> like, the, some of these, this is the thing that worries me. It's up and around past that one. Well, what's interesting is that I think some of these, because right now we just turned everything, right? right? But I think one of two of these is oh. different because we assume that these are, so see, this one is that one. So my right. gut tells me that maybe what I should do is I'm that just- That one is, you leave it. I'm gonna leave this you one. you actually turned it on. And then I'm also gonna leave this one and see uh, what this does. They may be like reverse Yeah, I think so because- it's tempting you to turn them because yeah, they're right there. Yeah, because one assumes that, oh, this is like on or off, but so that's still no good. Um, But let's see. So yeah. That one's fine now. So this one's fine now. So then now I think, I think that's the one I have to get to for this one. Yes. We might have got there you go i think you got level three let's see oh oh yeah and there's still okay so there's more stuff here ah. oh there's the cart yeah okay okay so how do i get to this cart? so there's that 
that, 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 that. There it is. It loops around. Ah, okay, cool. So yeah, that was that's an interesting one because it just took a little bit of extra. So this is still level. So this three. is still level. So this, this will be unfinished. This will be really fun when it happens. I'm assuming that like uh, when you, you hit the jump. button, it'll do some stuff. You have yeah. to jump, slow down, stop. So this is level four. And so I had those like um uh those shoes that let me go ridiculously fast. Which helped now a lot. I'm back to like sort slow of... ass. <laughs> you lost your shoes. God, what a punk. I love this guy. It's like Marty McFly or something, you know? So good. Oh, VH said so you had to go. Thanks Bye, for hanging man. out. Thanks, thanks I have for... to correct a database with date info stored as a string for some reason. Whoa. Oh, so what for, to, man? Is that for like manipulate a... manipulate strings into actual uh, date. Oh, Smart. what is that? Oh. Smarter than me, man. I don't even know what that means. Oh, uh, you have to um, parse the string. So you have to go, oh, is that part the date? Like if it's two digits, four digits, if it's a text, you have to go, oh... January equals zero one, Feb F E B equals zero two, and then you've got capitals and lowercase. Depends if people were like really good at entering the string or not. Oh, this is a long one. Whoa, man, this has taken like a lot of like brain power. To, I'm learning it's... not to fuck with anything <laughs> until like you figure you out have every... to, but it's not easy. It's like no, this is definitely your game because mazes make me insane yeah i insane. wouldn't even say this is my game i just <laughs> i'm just like have a bit of a better memory for this kind of crazy stuff yeah. but this is a complex one this is a good it's a big one it gets getting bigger yeah and it's just interesting the what is that thing up there i think there's a sprinkler is it needs good to, to go like... through is it death to go I don't through know what that does it's always so scary to like hit things and sorting and filtering for these strings of the nightmare yes yeah. yeah, man. Uh, you Sorting guys, them. you pr you programmers are alchemists to me. <laughs> Seriously. Have you gone up that ladder at the top? The yeah, it's it's weird though. It's like trying to like because there's like multiple. Yeah, and you have to remember, and you have to keep go, ch and you have to go check. Oh, so we at least know what we're aiming for now. Yeah. So that's good news. It's better than nothing. So somehow. Like I can make a map if you want. Oh, that's okay. Right. We'll just do trial and error. Oh. Now you, now you have to figure out which one. Yeah, that that's on the, that's the hilarious part. Okay, about that this. one was close at least. So that I'm one's thinking... good. Thinking. And yet, oh my god. <sighs> Whoo! Okay. <laughs> wow. Erlen, just zeros and ones put together the right way. That's all programming is. It's just zeros and ones. Just zeros and ones, man. Just in a row, you put them in the right order, and you get this. It's simple. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just, you know, roll the dice, and maybe a game will come out. Maybe it won't. Oh my god, there's a lot. Okay, so we're going to go back down there, and we'll find out if that did <laughs> what we want. Yeah, I, I think see I, this being a map. I think I remember how to get back. I think I wraps around so you know it's only certain size yeah because what we want is we want to get back to that main room okay, okay. so that's oh, good turned off that one now yeah so i'm gonna see if i can, can get, get to this ladder no, no i can't you have to go through a different way i think i think can i go around like loop around so i'm thinking that top one which i'm yet to be able to hit i'm thinking that's our one you know because <laughs> if you look at this Calling each user to ask what time zone they were in when they entered is the worst part. Oh my god, Whoa, dude. That's a nightmare. Oh my god. So you don't have just date, you have time. Yeah, so like, you see... So you have to have an offset as well. Oh my god. Oh. Hopefully nobody did any work while they're uh, remotely working and they're always in the same computer. Because if they had a remote connection and they were in a different state or province, um, then you'd have to take that into account. It's like, well, did you work on your laptop remotely when you're visiting California? They would have to subtract two from your normal amount. Good luck. Oh, my God. That, I do not envy that task. Don't forget daylight savings. Oh, no, no. 
And not only don't see, forget see, daylight. See this guy up here? I think that's our guy. Oh, that's Do you know what I mean? One? I'm pretty sure that that's the one that's missing. Um, and I'm yet to figure out a way to get there. Mm. Because I'm thinking that like... You have to just trace it. You have to get to that ladder. You go down from up above. Oh, but you're... Does it loop vertically though? It's an interesting... It might be that ladder. It's a challenging one, man. This is not... <laughs> this is a big maze. And this is just level four, friends. <laughs> this is just level four. Oh, there you go. There's some, a bunch of some, stuff. Something like this. Whoa. Yeah, daylight savings is interesting because some states and provinces don't observe daylight savings. Some do. Some have changed their rules at certain on certain days. So you'd have to take that into account as well. It's like, when did that state change and which day it happened on? Oh my god, that's a nightmare. Nightmare scenario. Ten seconds. Nine. Eight. <laughs> you have ten seconds to comply. <laughs> Man, Robocop's such a good movie. Love that movie so much. So let me know when you want to give up, because this is getting exponentially complex. <laughs> yeah, man. In I'm, terms of size. In terms of size, yeah. I'm like, this is an interesting one, too. It's like, this is on the edge of, like, a good one for the show. <laughs> it's it good. is. It's good, though. It's really good to, like, show it. But it's always tough, because, like, I don't know if you guys want to watch, like, an hour of me wandering around mazes trying to figure out things. But that's, to, that's a, I want to draw, like, a hard parallel between, like, what's a fun game and what's yes. like fun and to watch for the show. Cause, Cause they're are, very, they can be very different. They could be very the same actually. Totally. It's hard to, cause some, some I was doing like high score challenges, you know, with Activision games. And once yes. my system's fixed, I'll go back to that. But, um, and I was surprised people were just sitting there watching, but they weren't saying anything. They were just yeah, kind of mesmerized. Just... And, and I thought they would just drop out, but you know, they held steady for a lot of them. I'm just, just dying over and over again. They're probably more interested in the frustration of my face. Yeah. And my, and my yelling at the at the at the console more so than than anything else. And and they're cheering me on too. Well, yeah, and course. if you got so like, like high yeah, score, you do when it. you're pushing for a high score, it's like you got yeah. an objective. Yeah. This one's like let's watch Erin wander around a maze for. <laughs> That's right. Labyrinthian style, you know. Yeah, mazes. They don't. I just. I. I'd rather go for skill than memorization in games. There's something to be said for these types of games. Um, oh, I love Some people it. love these. Like, oh, this I is... turn off that, and then I have to go over here and do that. Man, when me and my sister were, like, little kids, this is our shit. She would, like, I'd play, and she would, like, make notes, and she'd be, like, memorizing yeah. stuff. I don't mind it when it's that. When there's maps, I'm all good. So yeah. if we're gonna play this seriously, I would I would definitely do a map. Yeah. And my sister's and my sister's Asperger's, so like she's very um she's totally into Oh my god, like if she's detail. got a map and everything like that, she'd just like she'd be like, No, we gotta do you know, like Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm just thinking if she were here, she'd love this. This is her shit. So you haven't even been to that room yet with N the two switches and the Yeah, the bottom switch is I kinda know what I think our objective is actually. Um, the trick is trying to figure out how to get there, but you see, um, I'm, I gotta kind of get to this, uh, see this one, but I gotta, I gotta get to that one. There's just a lot of little, little bits of things to sort of continue to sort of work Horizontal on. walking animation could be better. It's, it's hilarious. Kind of, like, kind of, he's very shuffly. Yeah, man, he's, uh. <laughs> yeah, the climbing's really good. It looks like, don't. uh, Pitfall, which he took after. Was his reference. But in Pitfall, he's running all the time so there's a lot of big leg movements this one he kind of is doing speed walking <laughs> yeah it's kind of shuffling fast yeah it's part of his uh er, could, you know morning aerobics He's he could have just... turned it oh you made it there but to the middle can you make it to the no those block you Damn yeah it. so i gotta figure out like maybe there's one that i didn't get maybe just keep going to the right because it does loop around as shown in the last uh the last level damn it so many ladders and rocks blocking the ladders oh there you go now you have to go down at some point okay so that's one that we for sure gotta no, get i can't get by that damn and it. then you haven't even made it to that sprinkler thing well the whatever thing, that is yeah that's like uh this is for when you know work in progress walking this is for when marty needs a shower you know <laughs> the hat's great i love the hat i love the, the green. arms are a bit stiff 
I think. So if he could move his arms and yeah, check it out. Maybe a bit more. Maybe I mean, he, he had to keep. I think more leg. Yes. Okay. So I bet it's that top one that's. The oh, you goal. got by it. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Now so, you go up. Oh man, yeah. This is this is the. This might be. Uh, it. I don't think no. so. Okay. So we got that. Uh, we go back down and around. Yeah. So we gotta like keep going. Which we, may turn off the top one. This is. That's the goal. Okay. Well, so. To the right of that, probably a rock. I'm thinking we'll see how it goes, but I'm thinking that like we're on the right track. Yeah. Um, we just don't have enough time. <laughs> But no. you know, I think say, we'll say stop lovey. after this. Guy, yeah, because you know. we don't want to ankle knees. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he's this got guy broken had, legs. This he's guy got, had some skateboarding got, injuries. He's, he's got fused kneecaps now, and he the only way he can do is this kind of shuffle walk. The climbing animation is quite nice. Yeah, it's it's very effective. I is. mean, he has to work within eight pixels, and I think his guy is is double pixel wide yeah um i think okay oh, yeah. it's too bad because i feel like i've had a little bit more time i think i'm close i think you are you're getting i think you've solved most of it oh because i gotta go down <laughs> About 10 seconds left oh there it is there's now you've got the bottom one no. oh yeah if i got if i had more time i think i can do this but yeah that's okay we got like five games to play Good stuff so that is actually a really good work in progress. Yeah, I man. I think he should really continue with that, especially I want to play the cart ones, the cart oh, parts. Oh, man. Just the jumping. It's nice to have some variation. Jumping and ducking, maybe? Yeah, so it's not just like this, like, you know. Yeah. Um, so the next game is, uh, well, he actually made Sticky Notes cart just before two years before this. And it's a cartridge that displays a custom message on your Atari 2600. And I think Thomas actually left a very scathing review of it on the, um, on the store. I love it. Um, saying it uh, could have had more in it. Uh, up to 900 characters in length, your custom message will scroll by on a colorful display. So you type in the message. Atari Age puts that on the cart. And then you can give it as a uh, suggestions are marriage proposal. Happy birthday message, a special anniversary message. Commemorate a special event because you put in your Atari, you turn it on, and it scrolls a message for ah, the person. Ah, cool! Yeah. I want to get married. That would be fun. <laughs> it's a big party. <laughs> it's gonna be good and times. And you just have to not let outside people influence that party. That's the thing. Yeah. Once you start letting uh, your family dictating oh, what see. goes on and who's invited to your wedding. So much drama. So oh, yeah, much and then drama. all of a sudden your aunt, and then your aunt's boyfriend, oh, and then your aunt's boyfriend's cousin's kid, and then all of a sudden you got 90 people. And... Oh, my God. And uh, also that cartridge was used in the National Breast Cancer Foundation for raising money. Wow. Uh, the first one was auctioned off, and the rest were sold for $20, and it had a thank you message for supporting the cause. Amazing. So that was a really uh, cool way of um, using the cartridge in a in a positive manner so the pressure next one we're gauge. going to play Damn. Okay. is pressure gauge this is what john carpenter score we need right here do, 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 do. <laughs> like i just feel it it's like <laughs> do, 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 do. so this was actually sold as a cartridge um uh by pack rat video games it's a 4k game and it says this is my first game i when i started working on this i believe there were only four homebrews out so Whoa. this is one of the early, early original, OG. really old school. So this is like fifth or sixth, depending. Oh. Um, some people have figured out how to make cartridges of these games and sell them. That's when I realized I wanted to join the ranks. <laughs> Initially, my plan was to make an Equalizer sound test app. Uh, the original version of my games is called John K. Harvey's Equalizer. It was just a way for me to mess around with the bars that went up and down in various inputs. After a time, I realized with the limited channels the Atari had, an equalizer app was probably not very useful, but I liked the concept. I ended up playing a game called Brave Fencer Musashi, which had a mini game where I had to push the button at the right time. Ooh. As such, some gauges were being filled. So this is a Twitch game. Be quick. And I realized that the concept could be very easily turned into Atari 2600 games, so I went for it. So can start it up and I'll read the instructions. Oh, I think I have to. Oh, no worries. Oh, it's got a little... We'll look at that while we... Gameplay is simple. The initial screen says pressure gauge. From here, you can hit select to see the first homebrew attempt at scrolling text demo. 
John K. This Harvey, man. This is the first man. ever scrolling text demo, apparently. This is pretty cool. Um, or his first attempt, anyway. Or you can hit the reset button to start the game. A little song will play, and you're on your way. The interface is as simple as can be. It only uses the button. This is fairly psychedelic as well. <laughs> Push the button precisely when the leftmost filling gauge is lined up with the range on the left of it. Get within the range and you'll be rewarded. Slightly. <laughs> the second gauge will fill up just a bit. You need a certain amount of successes in order to fill the gauge all the way to the top and advance to the next level. A miss results in the second gauge decreasing slightly. So you need quick skills to fill up the second gauge completely in order to advance to the next level. The rightmost bar counts down. Time runs out and it's game over. So... tune and you have to press it now yeah you can't miss you have to do it each time you're missing you're missing way too early way too early there. whoa okay when it's within that range oh is it oh it's that thing on the left <laughs> yeah it's the oh i thought left. it was the same height as the thing on the oh, right okay, okay i see okay let's give it another try What's, what's that thing on the left do? It's Wait, like... why do you keep pressing it right away? We have to wait. There you go. There you go. Oh, I see. Now you're on level two. Well, the thing on the very right is your timer. That runs out in the game. But how come the thing on the... How do I make the thing on the left go bigger? <laughs> okay. <laughs> thing on the left there. That okay, sorry, the thing on the right, because I noticed, like, so the thing on the left fires up, I gotta hit it at that point, but then yeah. the thing on the right seems to randomly go up or down. If you miss it, it goes down. If you get it, it goes up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's try again. I think I, I think I'm think i understanding. The thing on the very right is it's your time. Your time. Yeah. Oh. There you go. Now you got it. Levels are defined as follows. Level 1, slow. Level 2, medium. Level 3, fast. Level 4 and 5, really fast. Level 6, slow, and the lights flicker. Oh, damn. I can't even seem to get one. <laughs> Level 3 is pretty brutal. Oh, that one. Confused it. What did I say about it? Whoa. Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Well, I can't even get anything on level 3. Okay, okay. <sighs> oh, no, this is not the game. Oh no, you made oh, a we got a you made a note yeah you made a note on the I think we might have notes. a crash dude. It's just it's Oh no, it's game over. Sticky notes is the one you made a comment on. Sticky notes. Sorry, A. I think. Let's see. Sticky notes. Heart. Yeah. Pick reviews. One. Oh no, it's Nathan Strum. My apologies. Yeah, he just said that it's pretty boring cart. Well, it just has a message on it. Oh, oh, he made it to level four. Yeah, but I can't seem to, like... Oh, man. It gets brutal. Weird. It's hard to, like... I was, like, out of rhythm, you know? This isn't this tune. Whoa. Oh, man. Yeah, that's pretty cool, too. Pretty good for an early... Uh, pretty good tunes. For early homebrew. I tend to be okay at these types of games. Let's see what level I can make it. See what I mean? Like, these ones are like... Once you get in a rhythm, though, I wasn't even able to get one, even, with this. Oh, four, man. That's, that's the superhuman level. Oh, my God. Nathan is one of the very few reviewers that is really critical. Love it. Now, it is good to have people that can really dig into uh, art and criticize it. Because there's lots of people can say, oh, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, it's wonderful, but you sometimes need the uh, critical reviews to advance as an artist. Yeah, man, and sometimes you end up getting these, like, circular arguments. It's like, I didn't like it. Why didn't you like it? Because I didn't like it. But, like, why didn't you like it? Because I didn't like it. It's the same on the opposite side. It's like, what? oh, I liked it. Why'd you like it? Because I liked it. You know, and that's and that's where it's like cool to get people's opinions, but sometimes you don't actually. Yes, oh. level six. Whoa, level six is like easier? Nope. It's easier, but it blinks. So it, it 
flashes out. Whoa. New gaming style and challenge. Damn. <laughs> it makes it look Damn. like you miss it. Come on. Oh, oh, I made it. Dude, you made it. Number eight. This is how you break your control. Joystick. So good. Oh, man. It's so I was doing ruthless. It, I closed my eyes. It makes sense. Because, because you rhythmic. hear it and then you level eight. Let's see if I can get to past level four. It is brutal. I think this would be a good game for visually impaired people. If you included a noise of that rising up. Yeah. If you went and then a little blip maybe when it sh when you should be pressed. Well, maybe not a blip because that's too cool. But when I closed my eyes on level 7 or level 8, I could hear it when I got it and hear it when I didn't get it. And then I just went for the rhythm when I did get it and it was one press away from it is a tough game. It's so hard. That's VHZC talking. I man. know, and he's made he makes <laughs> games like this. Makes the... Do re mi. That's a tough game. Fuck. Oh god, once you're out of rhythm it's really I hard. Know, I know, it just throws you right out. Gotta make it to level five. At least. I gotta do it. Level five at least. She made it to level four, and you're you're getting. You weren't hitting on level four though. It is hard. Level four is brutal. You have to almost think of it as a as a song. You go, do 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 do. And you have to find the right tempo. Oh god, it's hard because when you're out, it's like really hard to get it, you know? Yeah, think of it, you have to find Ooh. the tempo of the song. And that's a metronome. And once you get the rhythm, you get it. You could make the left bar move up and down. Oh yeah! I don't think he does. That would be super challenging. That's a great addition. I wish he was uh, still working on this. That would be awesome. Let's see if there is any more to this past that level. Uh, it says every 10 levels follow the start like level 1, but to have new surprises to unlock. But I don't think, there's no way I would make it past when it um, starts flickering. It's so like interesting that we're only using really like half of the screen. It is, yeah. He's just using um, Playfield for the, for the bars. And then uh, maybe Playfield at the top? It could be background. But if but if he's using Playfield for that, he probably using Playfield for that. Um, I'll check it out. See. Oh, no, he's using background for the top bars. And Playfield for that. And then... Um, Player zero and player one. It's kind of neat being able to be doing this on Stella because you can, they can flip check out what's and going do all on. The stuff, you know? Yeah. Get it on the backbeat. RC70 says. Man, I wish I was like a little DJ, man. Get all this stuff going. A former life, I thought I was going to be a musician, but no. That's a hard go. I'm happy. I'm in the right business for me. Filmmaking is hard, but it's not as hard as musician. <laughs> That's what I think, anyway. I think so too, man. And a lot of musicians are just turn into alcoholics. Cause it's just—it's <laughs> just a culture, man. All my all my musician friends are basically alcoholics. Oh my god, which is wild. Because it's just like you get given free beers, right? Like it's like you show oh, up to yeah. a gig and they're like, it's like you get paid sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's that, and it's like that whole like lifestyle too. And it's like impossible for them to like stop, you know? Because all their friends are like, it's like big part of the process, you know. I can't even get one. You got one, you did. Oh god. Hard. <laughs> Are you done? 
I'll try one more, but one I'm getting more. like I'm getting like borderline frustrated at myself, not with the game. It's just my flickering is easier than the third. Flickering, flickering level one is easier than non-flickering level three. But flickering level two is hard. Flickering level three is almost impossible. It's just too because you're looking at it. And oh God! This is you're like, thinking the flickering that is was the Sisyphus you, run. Think, you're thinking the flickering is you failing at the level, but in fact, it's just the screen blanking out. I was away a while, so I don't know if somebody set up the game. Since the game has cool tunes, maybe a sound indicating when you're in the range to press the button would be cool. A two-player option would work well. Yeah, you could have head-to-head -head for sure, because there's plenty of room on the screen for more. And since it's using playfield, there's no restriction on how many of these um, sides there are. The timer is the same. Oh, I got two in a row. That's the timer could be both people, but that, that's a level four. Uh, one more, and then we ha it has to be the last one, okay. though. Because... Yeah, two-player option. Great extension. The world needs more two-player games. Tanny and I were playing uh, Mercenary Kings on the Switch the other day. And it's actually a four player local uh, co op game. And it divides the screen into four. And it's it was a really, really good game. I can't even. <laughs> it's brutal. Oh, it's a brutal oh, game. God. I'm definitely going to retire at level eight because of it. Oh my god. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. Timer starts in the middle, moves both directions, depending on which player is better. Whoa, yeah, that's oh. cool. So you can like kind of compete, and if you hit more, it'll increase your timer and decrease theirs or something like that. Sort of a Tetris type of thing. Very, very cool. Like I like that music a lot. That's actually one of the coolest things that it's like a like a crazy horror movie with like a demented doll just sort of like wandering through the hallway. scared for this next generation people like if you gave them like a piece of paper and you're like write something like, what do we do then they just and they straight up stop teaching like calligraphy oh like, yeah or any or cursive, cursive or any of that oh yeah completely so this is his sequel to the game where it's multi uh things at once Ooh, okay this is gonna... one, one wasn't enough here's some more um so i'm gonna read the instructions for this one i think i'm gonna need them so that last game is actually still for sale at Pack Rat VG. Wow. After uh, 20 years. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pressure Gauge 2. Uh, first posted January 18th, 2000. The size is 4K as well. Um, you can download this from biglist.com. Uh, after Pressure Gauge 2 uh, launched, I started really getting into playing Super Mario Kart in my SNES. It dawned on me that maybe it would be a fun way where I could fuse Mario Kart elements into Pressure Gauge's gameplay somehow. But I came up with the four split screens and uh, the use of paddle controllers. Oh no, I don't have paddle controllers. Oh yeah, so, it's, yeah, this is where we're not on. Oh no. So I don't think this will work. Um, it's okay, I'll just... Can you I'll just mouse. do this to the joystick. Nothing will happen, but we'll we'll imagine it. Maybe. Let's see. It's this mouse. this mouse, you can use mouse for paddle, um, but I think it's try joystick. Try <sighs> pressing a button. No. Um, the main change from pressure gauge is that you now have two areas where you can press the button. The first area is the green selection. Okay. Uh oh. Let me restart it. Okay. See if I can click with my mouse. Clicking doesn't seem to do anything. Let me see if... Uh... It says it can use the mouse. Which one normally is it? Is it B or A? It's, it's always the first one. It's always A. Okay, cool. 
Well, it doesn't isn't always, but that's what it's programmed to do. Nothing? Nothing happening? No, it doesn't seem to... Or you can press your button inside the gray white area. If the gray turns white randomly, uh, the gray turned white randomly. If, if it's white, when you press your button, you get a prize, much like running over a question block in Mario Kart. Press the button again to select your prize, then use the paddle knob to select who to apply the prize to. Some help, some hurt. Is this a four player game with paddles? I ended up abandoning this since uh, I hit some problems that I couldn't get past. Oh no. First of all, I would have to put together an AI to allow for a single, two, three, four player game. I had no idea how to put that together. Second, I wasn't totally in love with the current project. It had the ability to be fun, but the graphics looked pretty terrible. I wasn't sure if I could take it past the concept stage, so it remained a prototype. Things are working. Yeah, see, I sort of, but I'm, I'm, I really don't understand how they're working. Oh, it is. Oh, it is resetting a bit. So no paddle. Yeah, I don't have a. An adapter for the paddle for PC. I'm sorry. I just don't have that because I don't normally play it. I normally play it on the actual Atari. Um, so we can take a look at this. <laughs> oh, because the right pressing right must emulate the paddle. So I'm not sure press. if what I'm doing, if this is what. I think that's good. You see, it's like growing. Try and get on the white one. Is that growing the second one when you get on the white? No, still growing the gr Oh, oh, <laughs> sad face at the top. Oh no. The but paddle button is a joystick position. That's why it's working. What's the status on the console? No update. Darcy couldn't come over because of high winds last Friday and he was my savior. He knows more about electronics than I do. Um, so that's where it sits. I'm working um, this green. I don't know if this is doing anything. You see the bar is growing. Yeah. Does that matter? Like, does anything matter? <laughs> what is life? <laughs> so let's read the instructions and see what those bars are. Because that was not part of it. I'm a build. Uh, it's pretty easy. Plug in the paddles, turn on the game. The annoying music doesn't stop until you press reset. Each player has their own corner of the screen. So you're at the top left. They start with P1 and upper left. So this is a four player paddle game. Object is simple. Press the corresponding paddle button when it's in the green zone. It'll cause the score section in the middle of the screen. Uh, okay, so I think increment. I did it, man. This happened. Oh, you won, I guess. Uh, 48 correct hits later nets you the title of game winner. So you won by hitting the green. Uh, whoever the, the winner screen is just blank which is what we got. Uh, there's also a gray bar within the corresponding player's corner of the screen. If you press a button uh, while on it, nothing happens. But when it turns white, you press the fire button in the air, you receive a prize, which you got a, a frowny face once. So try and go for the, the white. It has to be white. Uh, sometimes it's not even possible because it's not white. There you go. Oh, and now you get to pick your prize. You picked a green. A green thing. Oh, look, it makes me faster. Oh, speeds up the targeted individual. There are four speeds. Stopped, slow, medium, and fast. All players start on slow. So the rainbow wafer does nothing. Oh, Red I light. see. So if I'm competing against like my friends, well, yep. then there might be some huge advantages to going faster because then I yes. can... Like... Green light speeds up the targeted... Uh, Red light stops the individual who's targeted for three seconds or so. I wonder how you target the person. Yeah, oh man. Pink arrow, pink down arrow inverts the player selected. So you can make the person's bar goes the other way. Wow. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, man, I, I'm playing it and I got oh. no, I barely know. The yuck face completely drains the player's score to zero. Light blue, blue four hours pointing in the corners thing switches all players' positions on screen. So reset me and I'll, I'll show question you. mark. So like, check this shit out. So it's like, this is actually really I cool. wait until this white thing happens. So it's like, bam, now I get to pick it. And so now I got this. Oh, and, and that's a target. So at that point, you would have been able to pick somebody for that to happen to. Which one, another prize. So Give me another prize. So to win, you have to get it on the green. He's pressing the paddle button. So now I get to pick another one? Yeah. And so now I have this. Which is stop, and you picked you to stop. Uh-oh. For X seconds. I can't remember what it was. Oh, it wasn't long. 
But if he was playing an actual game with four people, you would move your paddle and pick player four to stop, and he would not be able to do that for X seconds. Yeah, so some serious tactics going on here. So oh, like... this has got to come back when the Atari is fixed. This is a great four-player game. So now I get down? Oh, ah, whoa, look at this. Inverted. I don't know if that's better or worse. It just makes it weird for a while. So you're going to stop yourself. No! <laughs> So hopefully you guys understand what's going on now. Just so like now I hit that white thing right, and then it's like question mark? Oh, it's random. I don't know what that one does. So the biggest one is like the speed one, right? So if yes. I can... Oh, another... Oh, so that's now it's a stop. question mark, so I guess this is just like... The worst one is frowny face. You could take away somebody's complete points. So and his go. points were that green line so check there. it out, so I got question mark again. I don't even nothing. know what that is. Some did. things do nothing. So now we get like... That's an invert, so you're back to normal again. So you stay inverted. Wow. So now this oh, is the best up. one, right? Oh yeah, because you can just rack up the points. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, this is making a return. i got to write that down for our four-player uh, tournament that we're going to do at some point. That and uh, beer pong which will be at the end of the night. Yeah, man. This is a, a decent beer, beer pong game made by EA Smith. Oh, man. I'll get me some beers, some Stella. Almost won, because he's going right across. And you and won. And I won. I, it's funny that this is like... Yeah, this is actually a good game now that I'm understanding whew, the concepts of it all, because it's just like it's such a different thing. It is. It's so different, but that's a really, really cool game. Yeah. That, sh that should have been... Uh, worked on and finished. It's so yeah, close to being like, done. Just and, and it's too bad there's it. no AI to compete against as like a, mm. a like if there that's all you need is like us the other four computers. That would be fairly simple. You would just say pre the AI press a button. If it's smart, you the range would be smaller within the good the two things. If it's not so smart it would, the range would just be bigger. Yeah and then that's, that's it. it. That's simple simple AI. You roll a random dice and it presses one to four. So one at to least eight, there's something to, to play against, and then you're playing against four people. That's cool, man. Yeah, that's really, really good. And you could do it with the difficulty switches if you wanted to, make it really simple. Or game game select and a number on the screen. You don't have to make a fancy screen. Hopefully, uh, maybe he continues on with that. Yeah. After. That one is very, very cool. So he's got he's got some great concepts going yeah. on with his games. Just, once you figure out what's going on, it's... it's... <laughs> then it's like, ah... Uh... Okay, so the next game, uh, we're going to be revisiting uh, Tumble Temple. Ah, cool. And I don't know if you ever played this. I don't but think we'll so. Is this the out. is this second last game? Uh, second to last game. Cool. Yep. Tumble Temple. I'm ready. I'm ready to tumble. Yeah, I don't play NTSC. And Do you want me to? I'll wait. Yeah, wait till we get it on the screen. There we go. And this is made by Blue Swimmer, who also made Balloon Trip, which oh, is cool amazing. I guess you can, Canada like... Clash, which is amazing. Birds and Beans. Should and I stay Tumble. level zero? For now. Yeah. yeah. This is a 4K game. Uh, first posted January 1st. Uh, last played January 9th. And then he did some updates after that, and that's why we're playing it again, because we're catching up with those updates. So one player can control two gauges each. Oh, I guess you could. Yeah, if you had two two paddles you could play oh, two versus two that would be intense though that's, but, some, that's some drummer level you know you gotta like yeah. learn some independent coordination with your limbs so this version is from january 30th 2019 so almost a year old and he hasn't updated it but it's done cool much i can't see any things that really need to be advanced so um let's get it going and you're that little dude and you're running around and you don't want to go in the sand and you can jump on the blocks, and the sand and it the sand slowly eats away, and you want to get the rings. Oh, so when I when I jump, level. I lose my ground. Yes. So if you jump off of that, it's going to be just sand. But you probably want to get out of there pretty soon. There you go. And get get to higher ground. Get to higher ground, man. And the rings build up a level. If it lands on me, do I die? Probably. Uh, block. Yeah, landing on you will kill you. And going too far above the ceiling as well, I believe, will kill you. He's reprogramming it, but we'll uh, check out the latest updates. 
Tumble Temple. Oh, he was talking about joysticks with no power ups. It's a real though. chiller game at the moment. Yeah, um, yeah, you could do it with joysticks. I should have um, gone for left it. Left and right, or whatever the other control is. Oh, uh, I guess I'm not getting any points unless. Oh, I'm slowly getting points. Yeah, tiny, tiny points. But the big thing is jumping off the uh, platforms, I believe. It gets you points, and it gets faster as the. Uh... Oh, you can walk straight across. So you do want to kind of, I think you want to flatten it out so that it's easy to get all of the That makes the place. sense. But you, know, oh, I you definitely it. want I to get those because those are points. I should have. Uh... So let's take a look at the updates that he's got here. January Whoa, 12th. yeah, that's a lot of points. The ring? Yeah. Yeah. This is the way to do this. Uh, January 12th, uh, version 2.3. This one rebalances the game a bit, so the game ramps up a bit slower, and the maximum speed is a little bit more manageable, because it was it got brutal fast. Also fixes the bug when the game just craps itself when the blocks get to the top. Uh, version 2.4 on January 20th. This version shows the high score on the title screen instead of the most recent score, and patches a few bugs. Oh my god, you're stuck in a block. Um, January 30th, the one we're playing, uh, he apologizes for the lack of updates of late. I've gone back to college for my next semester and I've been oh, a little man. bit busy. I wonder what he's studying in college. You know? Anyways, oh, version 2.5 is out, the one we're playing, which fixes no. a bug that sometimes causes a block to jump to the bottom of the screen once it touches the quicksand. Additionally, a PAL 60 version is now available for our European viewers. Uh, VHZC said, I made the art for the cartridge and the manual for Balloon Trick. No, I can't And that was a me. very, very nice little cartoony art that VHZC did for Balloon Trip for this, uh, for Blue Swimmer. So maybe he will want you to do it for this one because this is kind of the same kind of cutesy little character. No, okay. So that's a danger, did right? Up. There, can you make it across? Oh, no. I should have tried. Let me just keep your area there kind of nice and even. Let's see if I can, if I can do this because I want to, I want to. Uh oh, uh oh, yay! Go. That's good. Yeah, you need to. Uh oh. I think you can get up there now. No, oh, no. no, no, you can't. Uh oh, <laughs> now you definitely can't. Oh no! Okay, we just this this shit just got real, friends. Yep. No, shit just you're got in real. danger. Okay, okay. A little bit of luck. Yay! Okay. Mm. Oh, that's lucky. You pass by your arms and you're okay. <clears throat> Oh boy. Oh, you made it to 1,000, which is the next kind of speed level. Look at me, I'm just... Oh boy, it went to the top. What happens then? Whoa. Whoa. I don't think it crashes. I think Whoa. you're just in trouble here. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, uh -oh. it's sinking. Sinking fast. Oh. I needed my points. See, that's why you want to bring down Yeah, I kind of needed a better... Did, needed to do a better job, man. You might make it out of this if you if you play your cards right. I'm just going to be patient. Yeah, keep that area building up. Patient. And get up to that one, maybe. Oh, now you're forced to. Uh, this game is a Mr. Driller vibe. I haven't played Mr. Driller. Whoa, okay. Uh, you have just reminded me of my t-shirt's coming today. Went to check outside. The mailman was walking no, up the driveway with hit. it. Oh. Which t-shirt did you order, RC70? Is the one I got um, with uh, Bosconian. Oh, yeah. Yay! On a point. Easy start. Whoa! <laughs> that was close. Scary start. Yep. So let's uh, get up. Oh, thanks, Thrust. Let's see. What oh, he just threw down our uh, my uh, my thing. Oh yeah, I see what you're doing. That makes sense. Just gonna try and even it out. Just level it out. Just. Yeah. You get huge points for that. You jump on it in midair, I believe. Really? Um, I should be doing trying to do that. Yeah, you get huge points. Oh man, that's the way to do it. I can do so much better now with some of these new lessons. Uh-oh. Ah! Uh, good score, though. Yeah, damn <laughs> good Short score. game, but good score. Okay. Okay, let's, let's see. Adventure! Uh oh, I already... Oh. Up to check out that shirt. Oh. <laughs> Twelve eighty one. Oh, thanks, Thress, for keeping the up keeping already. track of the scores. I got an email thing that my Bosconian shirt came as well. The D train. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Oh, trying to get clever. I'll play again. Okay, I'm gonna just chill. Yeah, jumping on the blocks is a bit. Get that. 
a bit advanced. You want to make sure you jump on the block, not next to the block, because you'll squish it. Really cool game. I love the sprite animation. Yeah, it is awesome. Simple, kind of bigger character guy. Oh no, I was trying to be clever. I'm fucked now. Simple concept, but fun gameplay. Come play. on, I just need a little bit of luck. That's why you gotta keep it even. Yeah, I'm already failed. Oh boy. Oh, this is some bad luck, is what this is. <sighs> you just gotta get to that. Oh no. <laughs> no well, that's what I worse. said. This is terrible luck. Some, some... You could make it out if something comes down quick. Come on. And not I on need top a of you. Miracle. Oh, you could maybe. No. So yeah, that would have happened, would it? I did it. I did it correctly. Play one more. Look at this guy. Look at this character. This is the adventure shirt I got. Oh, I gotta wanna look at that. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the adventure shirt. Oh, see, I tried to jump on the thing. Oh, nice. Nice shirt. It's got the shadows. Oh, it's got a, a dragon, but a shadow of the adventure dragon that looks like a duck. Very, very cool. And it's the right size. Yeah, mine was ordered a small shirt and it didn't fit. It's very tight. So I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna reorder a shirt, and VHC gets some more money, <laughs> so I can get a medium. Cause Tanya, Tanya wore that. Oh, oh. just trying to get clever. What did you get? One oh. See, I that's did, the problem. It terrible. It goes... If I just chilled out for like another first game, I did better. But it was just the like most boring game of all time. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, just wait. It does need to build up a bit though. Get that down one. Yeah, there's certainly an element of luck to this one. Be careful, yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, damn it. It's too far away. You can't build it. Oh, oh no. No. I need something to walk on. Good. Oh, thumpy. Thumpy. Oh. <gasps> Dude, best timing ever. Okay, good. That was close. I need more blocks. I like the design of this character. Yeah, it's got kind he's of got a, like a shirt. He's got like a Tetris block just chilling on his... Yeah. Oh. Nope. Yay. Now I can kind of whittle down a little bit. Oh, oh damn I'll it. I'll do another one. Another tactic is to like build up the points really quick. So that, oh, maybe not too much. Because <laughs> I'm already up to 400. Yeah, I can do that one. Oh, God. There we go. 900, almost to the next speed. There we go. Yay. I'm falling a little bit quicker. Ah. Ah. Uh-oh. Those coins. That's <laughs> where it's at. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Missed. Ah, oh, cool. Nice. That's what I needed. Let's kill these guys down a bit. It's getting a bit tall. Whoa. Oh, missed it. Now they're falling fast, so it makes it harder for the coins to get yeah, the coins. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, it's a good good strategy you've got here, if you can, like... Yeah. Oh, because oh. it gets too high up. 3366, six. I'm happy with that. Let's see if I can like do better. It goes than back that. too fast to display the high score. It does. It does. But I guess, yeah, it should sit there for a couple seconds so you can see it. That would be a definite suggestion I would make. Nice. Or it sits there until you press the button, which is even better. Because this isn't a fast button pressing game, so I think you'd be pretty safe. Like, give it Give it like a, a two second delay and then ask and then ask uh, for a joystick input for the button. And that's always a good rule for uh -oh. for scores. Uh -oh. You can get up there. You can get up there. Not anymore. <laughs> you can make it over if you're uh -oh. clever. 
You can make it over there. I'm scared. <laughs> well, it might get up too high. Oh. Uh oh. Whoa! Oh, I should have just jumped. I'm an idiot. Yep. Should try to jump. Oh. You can make it up there, I think. Try it. Oh, uh -oh. Now, now you can. Now I can. Rip. You can, you can make it over there. You have to get down those blocks, man. Yeah, jump over to the left. There you go. Uh oh. Kill some of those uh, blocks. Oh god, there we go. <laughs> get up there. Get up there. You can do it. Oh, not anymore. Oh shit. Let me try one more. It does. It does go back too fast. One, one, three, six. Or something. I don't have a sense of how high I can jump yet. Ireland didn't get that score. I did. Yeah, it was fucking <laughs> James for sure got that score. That's not me. I'm, I'm, I can't even break twelve hundred. Oh, nice moves. Uh oh. A bounce and a move. Nice, nice. Get some good moves in. I want to get some points. Give me that points. <gasps> okay, let's look at this. This is lucky shit. Okay. Yeah, take down that left hand side a bit. Just a little bit. Just a little, a little touch up, you know? Yeah. Just smooth off the edges. Coins are a hundred, so they're pretty good points. Okay. PB. Nice. Uh, I was focused too much on getting that score. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh okay. Rip that yeah. side. You need to get up. Oh, God. If you can, try and get up there somehow. Oh, God. It's just getting worse. <laughs> Yeah, stay on that big area there. Uh oh, I thought I could get that point. I guess that is the danger of building up to the sky. It's like it's done. Like you, you'll never get back up there. You have to do some. And even if you can get up back up there, it's just no chance. Oh, I was trying. Because it keeps adding to it, and you'll never be able to take it off that. And if you get up that high. The chance of a block falling in you is is super Massive. super high because you have no time to look at it. Nice. No. Um, you can get up there. Take that down. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little. This is a little touch up, you know. Yeah. Some dangerous areas there. Yeah, fill that in. Come on, give block. me that coin. I want a coin. Let me a coin in a long time. No. Oh my god, look at these pedestals you have to jump back and forth at. That's, uh, yeah, you need a coin to build, <coughs> build your base up. Oh no, I another need to column. Sneeze really badly. Another column out of your reach now. Oh no. <coughs> I don't want you what you have. I'm gonna get sick. Oh, that coin was. Ooh, I would jump up to the left and bring that down. Let's see. Oh. oh, not jump again. Jump right up. Get out of there. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, oh God. 2049. Good score. Hold on. I just got to blow my nose. I'll be right back. Um, I don't think the column's locked, but it's essentially locked when it hits the top because there's just too much. There's too many um, blocks falling that you'll never be able to get. We'll start on a higher, um, higher level after this game. So you can see what the top speeds are. Hi, Pixel. It's cold in the rest of the house. Oh, my good nose is better. Hey, can you shut the door? Yeah, for sure. He Even can stay in, in, but it's just cool. freezing. It's just freezing in the rest of the house. Literally. Well, not literally. It's not freezing in the house. Oh, what a cool, simple design, man. I like this game. It's addictive. I love See, the, and I like case the case in point 4K games. I love the RNG element of this too. It's just like it, oh, it's yeah. different each time and like those tactics. I love RNG games. That is just so so different each time you play. Yeah, it makes it the most replayable, you know. Picks Damn it. It's terrible. Don't record that one. <laughs> hey buddy. I mean this is an an in-depth game. But, you know, does that matter when you when it comes to playability? It's all about enjoyment of it. It doesn't have to be a, a massive penult 
kind of uh, it's true, man. 100 hours, but maybe you'll put 100 hours into this by just playing it over and over and over again. Boom. Yeah, it's like 200 or 300 points jumping on a, a falling block. No, 200. Pixel, well, now's not the time myself. to... To, now's not the time to love James. Yeah, I need a coin. This guy needs to get more than 3,000. Come on, 3,000. I need a coin. That's what I need. Build that base up. Yeah, we need that Let's base. Let's get that down. Come on. Or, just, or drop some blocks. There you go. There we go. Maybe I'll go on the right hand side. Blocks in the right place, you know? Yeah. Oh, see, dicey. Yeah, not good. Mm. Yeah, you gotta no, be careful because there's also like a point where technically you shouldn't, you shouldn't be jumping. Yeah, you gotta like. Like I should not be jumping anymore, but I. Oh no! Oh no! Oh. Look no. at this! Oh good! Oh no! no. We need Help. a coin. Help! Help me, Obi Wan oh, Kenobi. I gotta do that. Uh, oh no! Whoa! Oh no! Whoa! Oh, I want that coin. Well, that's good. Just step by step. Oh, good. Some something to walk on. Hooray! Okay, good. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now let it build up a bit. Oh, I should have gone to the right there. I can't get that. Ooh. Uh -oh. Should I? Nah. Now you should. Yeah. Ah! Oh, oh no! I fell off of it. Oh, I can still get up there. There we go. Let's get that down. Not too much. Not too much. Yeah, just enough. I can walk across this, supposedly. It's a bit scary. <gasps> that changes everything. It does, because then you can walk without uh, destroying a block when you don't want to. Oh, I can't get that. No, it's too dangerous. Ah, I can get it. Now i got to get this down a bit. Just a bit. I like how it's certain points. Oh Damn. man, that's just 21, bad luck. 21, 21. Okay, now we're gonna go up. What can we go to? Five. I said, yes. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Okay, I'm ready. Let's see what this is like. Oh, we've never made it this fast. <laughs> whoa. Jeez. Did I? It seems whoa. that a, a block doesn't add anything to the total blocks. A block? Whoa, and you can't jump as high. Really? Look. Oh, you can't. Is that a full jump, though? Yeah, Are you pressing the button the whole way? No, you can't. Oh, I can jump. Yeah. So the, oh. the jump is configurable. Like it's oh, not, a, it's not I an didn't... absolute jump. You have to keep holding it down. Buddy, we Pixel, we down. love you, but we know what you're thinking. <laughs> Whoa, that was close. Didn't get the coin, but you didn't die. Getting used to this speed. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Holy shit. No. 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 Oh. Okay. No separate high score. Yes. Oh, for each. Oh, I see. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. That would be a nice a, feature, but. It's you an know. absolute. He's not done with it. Still working progress. That would progress. be a good little detail. Yeah, it's not this, much. It's the refinement, you know? It's, it's not much of a thing to add because it just changes when you change the level, the high score. And it's def it's definitely a different type of score when you're competing at this level. Oh my god, they're going so fast. <laughs> oh, that was close. That was that was a Gotta deal. keep these down. It's going too fast. Damn. Yeah, you gotta it. somehow manage these levels. It's not. Damn Whoa! It. Stay from moving. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh man. Man, I miss the Atari box. <laughs> Atari box. Atari like, box. That's the only. Yes. Whoa. Oh my god. It's there's no time to readjust. If you're in midair and a block is coming down. It's like Tetris on like the high levels, man. It is. Tetris on level 9. Ooh. It's no time to think. It's only time to react. Okay. Yeah. Just decided to leave. Yeah, it's the opportune time. I 
wouldn't say this speed is enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is pretty intense. It's definitely enough for advanced players to really challenge themselves, that's for sure. So if you're like, oh, it's too easy of a game, well, here's a level for you. Oh. Damn. Okay. Oh, no, I want to die. I want to go level zero again once more. Let's see how far I can get. Let's see if I can beat that top score. Oh, like that. No, ring. Coins. And great graphics of the ring and the, um, the sand. And the blocks are just blocks, but they fall down nice and smoothly. What are they made of? Oh, made of blood, made of uh, ball until it, it hits, and then it's made of play field. And of course, the dude is a player character. The sand is uh, background. Nothing. Wow. Yeah. I like the sand animation. Also, yeah, they found the right great. kind of hue for that sand, which they is did. really nice. Yeah. Is this a different game than the similar one you played? The blocks fell to a musical beat. That one's very different. Um, similar in the fact that... This reminds me of Tower of, Tower of Rubble a That's lot. the one he's talking about, yeah. Um, well, it's like, and they have a laser. That one, it's, it's a rhythm. Um, and it's got lasers to the side. Um, Uh-oh, you're on a real island. But in that one, you don't destroy the blocks. You just manage them as they crumble and fall. In this one, you destroy the blocks, and there's rings to build them up, so it's a little bit different gameplay. Same principles. On the out outside, they look very, very similar. It's Whoa. risky. Oh, okay, that's good, though. Now we're, I'm in trouble. There's uh, nothing not, here. Not really. You got a, you got enough space. Crazier stuff has happened. That's true. Yeah, yeah, I'd just chill out for a while. Uh, yeah, I think so. Kind of, you're actually back to like almost like beginning. Place. Actually, a two-player variation of this would completely work. He's only using one player. Yeah, that would be amazing. That would add a lot of dynamics. And so this. much fun too. I think that would that would really elevate this quite a bit. Yeah, there's no reason that he couldn't put in another. Uh, Another player in a different color, a red guy or a blue guy. It's amazing. In this one, you haven't been doing so well for points because you've just been, like, chilling I've out. I've been maintaining. I, there's not enough stuff coming down. I need rings to start uh, building up to, de to destroy. There just have not been a lot of rings. Oh, there we go. Yay. Still not enough to destroy. Got to get out of there. Because the blocks only come one at a time. So yeah. it's a very slow build. But the rings are like, what, eight? Eight at once? Yay! Okay, Yay, now I'm in the next level. Now at least it comes a little faster. I can't get that ring. <laughs> the coin is the second player. Uh, so you'd have to use some flicker. Oh, That's true. But I think that would be definitely worth it. Unless he's completely opposed to um, flicker. Some people don't like flicker. They're like, I, any game I make, there's going to be no flicker. I can um, understand that if that's if that's your taste. And that's um, an Activision um, rule that there's no flicker in any of their games. Whoa. And that's what Dan Kitchen goes by when he's making his his new um, 26 inch homebrew. It's going to be having no flicker too. Hey man, I think like coming up with those rules for yourself yeah, helps your creativity a lot. If you like, yeah, restriction helps creativity. In a, in Should a, I do one more? And yeah, then... then we'll move on. Is there a reason the falling block is a ball instead of a play field? Press says easier to program. Um, yeah, easier to manage probably, because then you can do it separately. It's like this is play field. It's drawn at this point. It's always the same until. Then I switch it. Now this is play field. And the ball, I think it would just be easier to program to handle it. Because when it hits, then you go and tell it, oh, okay, add this to the play field data. Rather than trying to manipulate and manage play field, constantly changing play field data, which would be a little, quite a bit more of a pain in the ass, rather than this constant, 
more static. Play no, I was trying to get right into it. I was trying to like. And a great title screen. Oh my god, the big guy. It's beautiful. I'd have to look at some of his other games to see if he uh, put any flicker in it. Let me just look at his list of games again. Let's see if I can remember. No. Coins. Um, balloon Trip? I think he put everything on different vertical planes on Balloon Trip, so there's no flicker there. Maybe the fish? But I'm pretty sure that was on a different vertical plane as well. Um, cannon Head Clash? No, that's all like Playfield, and then the two characters, and then the missiles for the for the missiles for the I don't know Cannon Balls, I guess. Birds and Beans. I think he just has the one player as you, the other player is the thing you're trying to catch, and then the ball as your um, as your aiming device. A leveling power-up would be nice. A leveling. I mean like it builds everything up to the same level? Invincible, higher jump, more powerful coin. Uh, yeah, those are good ones. Good suggestions. Invincibility would be good for a while. I mean like the blocks wouldn't hurt you? Then you get the problem of like... I guess if the block falls on your head, you would just be automatically bumped up above the block. Like, you can't live inside the block. Um, a higher jump. Yeah, that'd be a good, that'd be a really good power up. Whoa, good moves. I'd bring this down, bring it way down. This is getting dangerous heights. You oh, could have a two player mode where one. Is playing the game while the other is playing Tetris. <laughs> that's, that's fucking so good. That's hilarious. That's what we gotta do. That's the future. Uh, oh, oh. Or you luck. could okay. Let's move on. Or to the you next could dictate one. where the next block is falling. Maybe. Let's get this next guy. Going. That is good game. Good game. Okay. Next one is Ninja Sky. We're going to be revisiting it and trying to... I've never to... played this before, so I'm really stoked. I'll probably do a couple ones, and then I'll let you just like take us home. Sure. I'll see how far I can get. Huh. Excuse me. Let's just restart that so people can see it. Oh, not that button. There you go. Comes in nicely. 2019. I love it. Yep. No, I've never played this. Actually, that should be changed to 2020 because he released this version in 2020, I believe. Right? 2020. Yeah, the second day. Uh, I can excuse him for that. Yeah, you know. January 2nd. <laughs> or a jump that doesn't destroy the block. Ooh. Yeah, a temporary. That's a good one. Um, you haven't played this? No, I've never no. done. Never done this. I one. mean, you know VHZC's. Oh yeah, um, man. I remember style. Night Guy in Low Res World, but I don't think I've done this one. And we just did uh, Peril, didn't we? Yep. With his, yep. yeah. Okay, so this one is from uh, what? Oh, he's not in the channel anymore. That's too bad. That's um, okay. So this is uh, first posted to April twenty third, twenty nineteen, on Facebook. This build is from January second, as I already said. Thirty two K F four game. Uh, we last played it on January 3rd, not too long ago, but I, I really desperately wanted to have another stab at this because we got so close to the end, I think. Because he wasn't giving away any any um, <coughs> any hints how close I was to the end. Um, so, go for it. Um, so, you're a ninja guy. You Whoa. jump. Your main thing is jumping. You can climb. You want to avoid things. Man, killing this first level. Fall in the pits. Yep. So you jump over the fires. Yeah, you got it. You got it. So I did some stats on my best game last Whoa, time I okay, played. Okay, so this is like. Oh, also you can duck and slide. Is this the? So that's what you want to do. You can jump over them, but it's a lot harder. Yeah. Screw yeah. that. Okay. Oh, thanks for that tip. Now is that the way out? Okay, good. Ah. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, you gotta what? jump on this guy's head. 
Nice. I hand. have trouble with that. That's my... Oh, go back to the right and press that button. This button. Yep. <gasps> oh, that's good Bonus news. Heart. Um, so... No! Oh, I see. I see. That's dumb. I was like, I can just... Doesn't reset. Doesn't reset the level. Oh my god. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Jesus. <laughs> Never tried jumping. Nice. Immediately wasted the heart. <laughs> RC70 says. That's well, that's happens. what it's for. You know, he's not doing too bad. Oh, this is timing, isn't it? Yeah. It's a lot... Is there a space where it, like you're safe with this uh, one? Uh, no. You just gotta really. follow. Okay. There's enough time. I got. I know what's up. There might. Be. No, there's no space. Come on, come on. Okay. And you don't slide or run faster, so sliding and running make no difference. Uh, also, games made by VHZC: Do Re Mi, Draco, I Ran, Night Guide, Low Res World, Low Res Racer, Ninja Sky, Peril, and A Roach in Space. And he has a very distinct. Um... This is such a VHZC game. I love it so much. <laughs> Uh, big fans here. Big, big fans of VH said so. No! Okay, uh, ran right into him. That's one way to do it. If you had a knife, maybe, but you don't. You just have really strong, destroying legs. There you go. Whoa, I gotta kill this guy, too. Yep. Nice. In your face. So last, the the good run of this I did uh, took 16 minutes. Whoa. Um... And I made it to level 40. 40 unique levels, because there's some backtracking on this game. Where you have to go through the level again, but it gives a whole what different... What is this? It's a trampoline. Whoa. And he makes some of the best platformers around. Uh-oh. Am I, am I fucked? Press no. Oh, <laughs> A Roach in Space is available in the uh, Atari HDR. Oh, VHNC is here! Yeah, man. Yes, um, so one of these is for sale. Not this one. Uh, a Roach in Space, which I have. That's what showed off. <sighs> okay, do I gotta jump on this guy? Oh, God. Oh, God. You too can own this beautiful game, A Roach in Space. No, I got By VHNC. Shoot him up action. Hey, man, I made it. Game program for the Atari 2600 computer and computer system. Excellent. So that is where you come back to. Okay. So you have to go get the key and come back. And this is, an, a, this is a great shooter. Really, really fun shooter. Power-ups! 40 plus enemy waves. Whoa. That's what he said for this this game too. 40 plus levels. So he won't tell how many levels there are. But I did make it to the 40th unique level, which was the hand. And either that is the boss, or it's right before the boss. Oh, okay. You want a hint with this one? Uh, oh, you got it. Uh, yeah, it's it's. Don't bother jumping on the first one. Yeah, Jump that's on the second, thinking. and then go right to the end. A level display at the beginning instead of the score would be nice. Well, oh god, I don't know if I can do this. There's not really though, levels in this because. Oh my god. Because levels repeat, so I don't know if that would be useful information, having a, like a level. There's a secret in the key screen. Oh, fuck. Oh, this is the key screen. Oh, and the key screen over there. Oh, that would be very helpful. I bet you there's some hearts and I just fucked yeah. it up. Okay, thank you, BHZC. I was wondering yeah, James will have a shot at this. So that'll help me when I get to the hand level, because I immediately died and I only had one life on that. Oh, oh, man. oh man. I was like at pace with the guy. <laughs> Squish. Yes. Since this could pass for an Atari 800. <gasps> I hatch. got one. The animation and, Whoa. and movement in this game is so beautiful and smooth. And the level design is so incredibly creative, as always with VHZC's games. And I love that following eye. Ah, oh, you could have just... put a jump to over it. Yeah. To just go for it. Okay, this, this might be mine. There's so much timing in this game. Whoa. In peril, there's an, a level where it's brutal timing. Like, brutal, brutal, brutal timing. 
No. Oh. Okay, you can. 34, 37. Well, at least Fort I made Maryland. it fairly far for you the did first really one. Good. Really, really good. Oh, God, what a game. These ladders are beautiful. I love the ladders. Sometimes you have to make compromises on the ladders, um, depending what else is on the screen. Belt. Yeah, this is a uh, ducking kind of level. Oh, yeah. There ain't no. Any hearts here? Hearts, hearts, hearts. <laughs> Great timing. Yay. Let's see if I can kill all those guys without getting destroyed. Oh, yeah, this is. I should jump there because yours tactic really worked because it gives you an extra little bit of height before it reaches you. Yeah, I think my timing was off and I just barely made it, you know? You did, but your jump did give you a little bit more. Edge. Slide. 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 Come on, ninja. Okay. Go, ninja. Go, ninja. Go. Well, it's cool you can just run. Yeah. You can fall off that. My tactic to this was to sort of position myself. Yeah, that was what I yeah. was doing. It's a very smart tactic. I find, I find you do it like right at the edge of their thing. Because then you don't have him coming back at you. Exactly. For a, an extra hit. Heart, heart, heart. I need my heart. And I love his huge animations. Man, and all the design is so beautiful for all this stuff. What is he? Does he use arm crazy stuff of his? No, no, no. Yeah, see, that's... I, well, there you go, man. Yeah. So bring it full circle, I mean, this is fucking great. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is like... And we don't need... I don't need this a goddamn basics. arm processor. I just need a good game, you know? Pretty sure. Yeah, he's just using the basics. No DPC. See, that's no the thing. It's, it's about game it's design. It's always about the game, man. And it's so smooth. So beautiful. It's very basic as well, is what he said. And that's, that's even more amazing that he's able to manipulate Batari Basic into something so well done and so smooth. So huge. Lightning. Uh, dark levels. Hate them. This one's uses them very nicely. Yeah, these ones them. I can actually, you could, I kind of get a feel of them pretty easily. Yeah. Um, yeah, I... I took some damage on this guy. Yeah. Same tactic though. Yeah. Always stay at the edge. You only can get hit once. Um, your time is off. This is all you need to do is. Can't you jump too early though because he kind of pauses when you hit him, and he can double back. On you. Yeah, I got I got hurt a couple times doing that. Yay! keep all these lives. Okay, let's find the secret. On the key room. Ninja stars. That's a jam. I think this next one is, this is the risky one, honestly. If you're gonna get killed. Oh, yeah. I just know it. Okay, so there's gotta be something on the left. Yeah. I bet you. Oh, you have to duck! Very what? Is this clever. like an extra level? Wow. Dude, you have to duck underneath it. <gasps> no way! Thank you very much. I will definitely take these. Oh, but it, you don't actually see Do what you max it's... out, or does it go above? Oh, no, you you max out, so. Max at six. Oh, well. Bonus points, I guess. Damn, okay. That's awesome. That's If I had that, I could have played for another while. Duck, I didn't know that. I was trying to. Wasn't trying to spoil. Uh, oh, but I fig figured it out. Yes, okay, those ones aren't terrible. No, you just have to be very you know, precise with your jumping and quick. Luckily. He mixes it up with easy and hard. It's kind of nice. That's yeah, easy it's and then well scaled, you know. Bonus hearts. Give me some of those hearts. So VHZT, does it max at six, or is there, it only shows six, and I actually have like nine or... I bet it maxes at six. Ooh. That's my bet. <laughs> I bet. I bet so, too. Uh -oh. Damn it! Oh, yeah. Maxes at six. Is this 
was like Shadow Link the that we're just like fighting, you know? The worst at this. That was very close. Is there something down here? Again. That's your answer. Yep, Max is out. Maybe you get more than six lives, but now only six are displayed. No. Can you go back to the room key for four more lives? Maybe if you don't use up those. That would be that would be a very different game. No, you can't go back. You die. I think. Somebody said, "Don't give any more away, any more secrets." VHZC <laughs> thrust. I love his classic VHZC like style block right there. Boing. Yeah, this is where I died. Yeah, I die frequently on this block too. <laughs> because the timing is hard because it's moving and you have to move too. Oh, fuck. I forgot about this. Oh no, uh -oh. what do you have to do? Damn it! Just gotta do the good timing and be fast, I think. Oh, you go from first to third, I think. Oh my god. What am I doing? Wasting all this precious time. What did I do? Maybe you can't jump all the way to the, the middle one. I think you just gotta be fast. That's terrible. Damn, do another one, man. Why did I die on You'll that? be able to take us home. I probably would be able to get any part of the loop. Why did I have no trouble last time? Sometimes it's just hard with games, man. Sometimes yeah. you can nail it, and other times it's just like... Well, you know what's actually cool, man, is that you can totally afford to, like, die a couple times, man. True. Which is, like, you don't want to, like, bank on that, but just don't hurt them. Just don't beat yourself up if you end up getting hit, you know? That's true. It's kind of nice there's almost checkpoints built in in that regard. That's right, yeah. So you know that, oh, even if you're down a couple, you can yeah. at least get three on the, the key stage. But these are, like any game, it's cool because it's, like, the second you think you got it, ooh. <laughs> no. You don't. Something simple that you did before is maybe not so simple. Oh, hey, Arena. It's good to have you back, Welcome man. back. Back on the break. Yeah, man, we're just trying to beat this ninjish guy. Let's see. <laughs> and these are some of my favorite things that he does. It's these huge vertical uh, animations. There's some amazing ones. And this cool little checkerboard thing in the middle that's just nothing more than just design, you know? Skull. Yeah. Oh, he asked how did the nominations go? I, I don't think that's happening. That's Friday. It's Friday, cool. Um, they went well. They're all added up, ready to be revealed on Friday. Ooh. Big show. Who's, whose show is that? Is that Tanya that's or Darcy? Tanya's, and we'll be playing through uh, the nominated games. Quickly. <laughs> so many. But uh, yeah, so we'll be uh, announcing every single um, nominated game and uh, going through each of them and over the next uh, three shows after the nomination. So the nomination, then another one, then another one. And hopefully we'll be able to cover most of them, if not all of them. Come on. I said this last time I played this or playing Peril that games like this I go for levels until I complete the game and then it's okay 
Yeah, now it is, because I know that there's extra the lives. Secret. <laughs> actually, a fair amount of extra lives, too. Yeah. yeah. Big, big bonus. It's kind of nice that that happened, you know? I love the slow raising. And it's not necessarily intuitive when it happened, which is really that cool. That is definitely cool. Dude, it's too bad that you only get 100 points when it's maxed. It'd be nice to get, like, more, you know? Even just oh. 200. Just because I feel like to reward you for, like, doing Dying. so well. Yeah, because then you could really push for high scores. Because 100 points is just like, eh, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, uh, you know, the numbers. The numbers really matter. I mean, sure, they do on one level, but... If you can complete the game, yeah, that's when you go for the numbers. Is like... Yeah, I completed the game, but I also it would just, it would just be score. cool if you're like if you get a reward for having max hearts and you collect more, you know. Sure. Yeah. That would be where you would want to really reward the player. Because then there'd just be because right now there's not a hell. I because th I think you get a hundred points whether or not you have the the hearts or not. Right. I'm I'm thinking that's the case. I need to check and see. I haven't like I can't confirm that. Only about halfway. Hundred yeah, points. Yeah. I wonder if if. You... <laughs> At least there's a little ledge there. Yeah, the ropes are very uh, very slippery. I love these eyes. Well, it's so nice when you have a kind of a style, you know. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Like you can just kind of use your your things. And you, know? and you put the same things, like similar things. Yeah. In games. And there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that man like reusing your own stuff oh yeah you shouldn't be stealing other people's stuff but you know like having carryovers from uh, previous games that's really yeah cool. it's like it's it's it, once you figure it out see now i'm afraid of this <laughs> for no reason yeah you just it's just you just gotta keep moving and the color on this, people were observing last time that they love this kind of neon. Oh look. man, it's beautiful. Whoa! Holy shit! Oh, I see that there's almost like no, I'm yeah, stuck. My foot got stuck. I hate it. This happens to any ninja. I guess you can go on the top left as well. Yeah, and that gives you a little bit more time, but you still have to jump over one of his rocks, barrels. <laughs> Whatever it is. Damn it, I got stuck! This is I don't even know what level number this is. This is maybe like halfway, like twenty? Or this might be like even fifteen. Um, I did make a note of it. Isn't anything at the top left? Oh, we missed it. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> Not that I don't. Was there something I, I there? doubt there was, but we, we were just like that. We just haven't explored that. Oh. If we come back here, so this is another example of his beautiful graphics. This dragon. Vertical graphics really well. <gasps> yeah, the swimming level again, gorgeous. man. Whoa. Did do you get hurt if you touch those things? Oh yeah, death. Of course. Oh, it's the only way. And the eye. The ever searching eye. <laughs> now, this is hard to get out of. Oh, you have to press on. Yeah, I'm feeling like we gotta push that button. Yep. That's okay, we'll catch it next time. Theoretically, I can do it too. Damn it, too early! Hard. Enough the lives to spare now. That's how they get you, man. Yeah, then you confidence. rush, and then you. Oh. It's like gambling. It's like the second you like, you know, you're it's a really smart gambler. You know, you get bit by bit by bit. All of a sudden, you lose a bunch of money. You're like, fuck it, I'm just gonna like make a big risk to get it all back, and then that's how you lose all your money. Yep. Oh yeah, this is timing. Luckily, it's not exactly timing. It's just a matter of hitting it and then... Can you just run over top of these? No! What? 
Yeah, we were thinking about a different game. Sorry about that. Terrible! There's always a glass ceiling, no matter what you do. There's some hearts. Mm, I think there is at some point. But better come soon. Something tells me that it might have been some hearts on that left screen, man. Because it seems like that would have been like, if we think about like the incremental, like like where the placements are. Yeah, like in terms of like the rhythm of when it makes sense. Whoa, this is actually like harder than it looks, I suspect. Because you hit the ceiling. Yeah. <sighs> oh, that's cool, but that's actually an easier one. Whoa, <laughs> is this like a lizard? <laughs> Get out of here, this is out of like control cool. Look at this like fish. merman. It Did you ever looks... see Cabin in the Woods? It's a fun yes. movie. And then he's going on about the merman. That's what <laughs> I feel like this is. Oh. Oh, yeah. That feels to me like that button. Maybe there's a heart there. Come on. Come on. Woo! Oh, no. Thanks. Now I, like, want to try and get everything. <laughs> there's something there. Holy shit. Wow. This is, like, actually takes some time to think about, man. And we got a robot up top. Damn. Okay. Yep. You gotta jump on that robot. I think left, right. That was what I do. Oh my oh. god. Whoa, you made it. Oh, oh my god. My god. That okay, was that so was close and lucky. Luckily, we're we'll trying to get up. We'll get to see the next level. This is good. Oh, dude, we're back here. That's badass. I was thinking, like, I was wondering if this would pay off, and it certainly did. Oh, this timing's tough. Uh, you get a bit of time. You just gotta jump, jump. <sighs> Damn it. Yeah, what time is it? It's like 1.30? Yeah, I think one more. And then we gotta call it. But yeah, we can get one more. Uh, this game is not easy, but it's also, like, it's this not is a... hard, but it's just, there's so much of it. Well, it's and so it's cool. It's like it's Night Guy in Low Res World, where I don't think so we've much... ever beaten that game. Oh, Which is so cool that, like, there's this game that's, like, it's just, like, forever or something that you keep going. And that's why I think, um, you know, these Atari, the way the Atari scales games is so cool in comparison to, like, The Witcher, where you just oh. wander around the woods for, like, ever. <laughs> like, it's cool. Especially games like this, where it's such variety. Yeah, it's like this. That's some old school gaming where it's like the replayability is the fact that it's hard. It's like there's a finite amount of shit, so it's got to be tougher to play, rather than just like, hey, a bunch of random shit you can do <laughs> that's all fairly easy. Yeah. Oh. I would still like to see a screen number. <laughs> just have to count. Yeah. So I do have the screen numbers written down. Um. On the big ones. The first boss, the thing, the octopus guy, is level 14. Donkey Kong-like boss is boss on level 25. And the hand is level 40, if my counting is correct. Ah, oh, cool. So, so we were more than halfway. We were about three quarters then. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little less than three quarters, because I guess, what, 30? But if um if that Donkey Kong guy was 25, I'm fairly yeah. certain you made. But I love that there's the backtracking element that play. It's very yeah. smart. Okay. I love these, these crushers. Simple but gorgeous. It's, it's like some Galaxy Quest crushing. <laughs> I saw that movie once, so I don't remember that part. Oh, it's just, uh, that's one of my favorite movies in terms of, like, that's one of those, there's a few movies that I believe that you can just hit play and you will just want to watch till the end. Like, I feel like, um, to me, like, the most watchable movies are, like, Galaxy Quest, um, Back to the Future, Groundhog Day, Robocop. Yes. They're, like, these movies die hard. Then yeah. They're, like, impo you just hit play, and then they're just done, you know? There's no downtime. They're just, and they're all, I think, 90-minute uh, movies, too. Oh, uh, yeah. It's very, is this the octopus guy? Yeah. It's 15. Level 15. Those are the cool, like, like kind of 80s, like, you know, class. Like, it's when Hollywood was 
cranking out the blockbusters. Yeah, or just super watchable, tight, 90-minute scripts that were just right. very fun, you know? They're, like, the funnest movies. They're not necessarily the best movies, but they're just so fun to just, like... this game be a made with unity and run on a modern pc with the exact same graphics uh, sure. he said i still think it's amazing i totally agree oh if if it was made like you know, yeah put on a ps4 yeah that's the great thing about this, this well that's one. it's like comes back to the thing we're saying man it's values it's like fundamentals are what we come for and it's so easy to, to get lost in this stuff because the reality is, is as programmers and creators we have to give a shit about all the like behind the curtain stuff because that's our job yeah. but the average person when they pick something up it's like i always it's like music like with music people are like i like it i don't like it and <laughs> yeah. it is that simple it's so it sad is. because you want it to be more than that but at the end of the day you're like i like that one so if you look at the game uh thomas was alone it's all blocks. It's just blocks. Like huge blocks that it, like, could be done on an Atari 2600. There's some things that couldn't be done on a 2600, but it could be easily scaled down. Um, yeah, strong, simple, specific, you know? It's yeah. like, that's all it needs. Don't die this time on that. <laughs> Run! <laughs> Yeah, the modern 4K games look so different than the 80s 4K. <laughs> it's a good joke. They're talking about 4K in size, and then TVs have been for 4,000 lines. Yeah. Okay. This is just timing this one. Just. Yeah, you gotta land on the that far one's right. Close. Yeah, in the far right, and then you have time to jump. That is it. That's probably one of the closest timings in this game. It's interesting what levels are the hardest in this one, you know? Yeah. And it's also interesting on the which runs feel like they're the hardest. Yeah, you can't stop on this one. You, you just die if you don't move. I guess you could jump over it if you stayed all the way on the left there. But that's a dicey jump. It is. You can get your foot caught on that ledge. And so, yeah. So you have to jump a little bit before left. that ledge. Yeah. Now, so this is what people were wondering about at the end, like if if there's something. Damn it! Up, up there, I don't yeah. think you can jump up there. That's oh, the we'll, thing. we'll screw around with yeah. it this time and see. Jesus, that was close. Green guy gives you a heart. Green guy. Oh no. So yeah, let's see. I don't. Like you can't make it there. You can, like hit your head on it, maybe you know, trigger something. Maybe there's like try that ducking thing. I don't think that's like. No, he's, he's not gonna use the same thing twice. Maybe. I don't think there's anything. Yeah, there. it's just worth messing around. It with. is. We're trying because I'm down to four. And the heart is definitely oh, valuable. Oh, these dragons! Remember the lion in like that guy? Damn it! Lion was cool. That's a terrible way to die. Because this is an easier one. Yeah, the line is, is really, really cool. <laughs> oh no. my god, that's terrible. Yeah, once you find, like, your, your plane, you just want to, like, stay in it, you know? Yeah. Because it almost goes away, but it's got a sliver oh, of red. Oh, so close. Okay. You know he did that. Oh, no, he can't. Because there's a sliver of red. It's going to break your foot. Oh, dude, he said just wait till you see the spider in peril. He's proud of the sprite. Oh, I can't wait yeah, to see I it. Yeah, I just barely didn't make it to the spider when I was playing peril. Oh, careful. All oh, right. You have to press it and run immediately. Run! And then, yeah, and then jump. That one you have to anticipate. Yeah, 
We need a heart. We, we need a heart. Yeah, I'm down to two. It's not Merman! Good. It's not a good time. Yeah, these mermans. That's fine. I like that bird. Anything over here? Anything over here? Anything? Yeah, and he says that dragon proves it can be done in eight pixels. Yeah, a really good dragon. Oh, down to two. He's a toughie. Uh -oh. What? Proving once again this shit ain't easy. Not... I would do left than right, personally. Yeah, because yeah, then you're not in danger up there. Oh, yeah, because now you can really control this. And then you yeah. can almost be land on the edge and just use the same method. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Is there a glass ceiling? I think it is. Yes! Okay, we need some hearts. Whoa, machine gun firing. <laughs> yeah, we definitely need some hearts badly. Luckily, that guy's right at the edge, so. Same with this guy, it's not too bad. But he Whoa! Went, he's firing faster, right? Damn, yeah, once you think you're in a rhythm. No! Just to the right of him. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's like uh, way what? past the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good time though. Oh my goodness, I'll have to play that again. I gotta play all his games. I haven't beaten any of them. They're so hard and challenging. Oh my god. We need like a we need like a VHZC eight hour marathon where we, we just really do friggin' try to beat one of his games. <laughs> <laughs> this is one. Just one. Yeah, interesting game for sure, Dan ABC. Yeah, very, very good. I highly recommend downloading it. Um, okay, so let's take a look at what's coming up. I, I think I already know, but it's good to go over it again. Next, on this Friday in two days, we'll be revealing the uh, nominees for each of the categories. Um, and just to remind everybody what the categories are, it is Best, Atari, uh, best Homebrew Atari 2600, Best Homebrew Atari 7800, Best Homebrew 8-Bit 5200, and then we get into the specifics of 2600s. Um, best 4K and Under Homebrew, that's a new one this year. Obviously the 7800 and 5200 8-Bit are new as well. Um, best Graphics for Atari 2600, Best Music and Sound for Atari 2600, Best Packaging for 2600, that's the boxes, which I already put back, so... Boxes, uh, label art on the cartridge, manual, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and best work in progress, up, up and coming games, like these types yeah. of games that we're playing here. Um, and the Atari Lifetime Achievement Awards. And all of these, except for the Atari Lifetime Achievement Awards, will be votable the day after, on the Saturday at midnight Pacific time. So like uh, just hours after the show. You will be able to start voting on your favorites. You get to vote for one in each category. So um, analyze all the um, nominees on Friday. Take a look at the list. Or maybe replay them. Absolutely. Review them. And you get uh, to vote on them till January 25th. So lots of time. You don't have to do it immediately. Um, so you have, let's see, the eight. 18th to the 25th, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days. Lots of time to play through the games, check them out again. Uh, I think the best packaging could be done for all platforms at once. Uh, you mean like mix 7800 and 5200 8-bit and all that stuff? I'd like to keep them separate because they're very yeah. different communities and I think people wouldn't like to cross over. And I, not a lot of games are released for the other ones either, so it, I think it would be a little bit lopsided. But we haven't got into that yet. I probably won't branch out too far, especially not in the 7800, because there's like three games <laughs> put out <laughs> last year. I'll probably go to Work in Progress next year for the 8-bits and the, and the 7200, 7800, um, because that will expand it quite a bit, and kind of expose more of the games that are coming up because there's a lot of 7800 work in progress 
but only three finished. Um, packaging might inspire, uh, work and inspire other platforms. And, you know, maybe the, the awards does inspire, uh, do inspire people to, I hope so. especially the work in progress, to finish up their game so it gets included the next year. Um, so I'd like to um, include more categories as time goes on, especially for the, the other platforms. Maybe even take on, you know, Atari Lynx. Atari Jaguar, but that's not 8-bit anymore. I'd like to stay stick with the 8-bit stuff. Yeah, we gotta st we gotta keep with our homies, you know. Yeah, um, and probably just expand the other categories um, into you know under f 4K and under um, the work in progress kind of thing, um, graphics, music, and sound as they expand out. We'll have to see the reaction from the other crowds. I've never dealt with the 8-bit or 7800 crowds before. It's not our show. Yeah, we don't play those games on the show, so we don't. Maybe they'll be like, eh, whatever, silly award show, and they won't even care. Then we'll just go back to 2600, but maybe they'll really love it, and they'll turn out and vote, and we'll see how the votes go. Um, I think you need a judge's choice category uh, for the game that did not win anything, but very well could have. Well, we do have mm -hmm. second and third place. We do announce second and third place, so there is judge's choice. Yeah. Or you mean not, not the... Um, not the choice of the public, but for like choice of the nomination committee. Maybe. I don't know. We'll take a look at that. That's, That's a cool idea though, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Only one vote per category like last year. Yeah, I really would like to have runoff voting. Um, but uh, I don't think the voting plugin works that way. I think it's only going to be one. But um, Al is working on the voting thing right now. What a hero, Al. Yeah, Atari Age has been very supportive, and Al's been very supportive. Think about how much stuff that dude's doing, and he's even like sliding in trying to figure out this voting business. It's amazing. And so we'll see how the plugin works and whether there's any options. I think it's the same one as last year, so that just means one vote per. I would, the ultimate would be like, this is my first choice, this is my second and third, and then they have to meet thresholds and things like yeah. that. That's a lot more fun. Because if the first place doesn't win, then your second choice gets to be uh, come into play. Um, and then you take off the lowest ones and things like that. I like that. Or even three votes. Um, that's, that's fun too, because you might be like, I like all three, three games. Yeah. Um, but I think still for this year, it's just going to be one vote. We'll see how it goes. Um, and then I'll, I'll put up the voting rules once, once Al comes in uh, and installs that uh, plug-in. But most likely it's just one vote right now because the nomination committee had a bunch of votes, right, each, because they I didn't want just one because then it wouldn't add up properly. So they had like, you know, 10 to 15 votes around there um, because you need a lot of input. And that, Absolutely. and that makes up the top 10 list that we'll see on Friday. And if there's a tie for 10th place, which there were, um, it keeps going. You know, That's awesome. If there's a three-way tie for 10th, it would be 10th, 11th, 12th place. Well, they're, they're not placement. They're just in the list. Nobody knows what, what they were voted on. And I don't think that's good to reveal anyway. Yeah, because, it's just like keep yeah. it simpler, you know. Um, so that's what's happening on Friday. We are revealing the top 10 <laughs> of each category in each of the nine categories. <laughs> that's a, a category could be in, games with insects in space. Ooh, that's a good category. I, mean, I think I know a game that would uh, fit that very well. Um, and we can expand. A game with ninjas who are also. <laughs> jumping ninjas, yes. With multi platforming jumping ninjas. Um, as a game with ninjas. If, yeah. if there's lots of a certain type of category, yeah, we'll expand out. I mean, but there hasn't really. Like, the games are so varied. Like, yeah. Like, if there's. So, it's such a unique. If thing, there's, you if know. there's 10 say 10 sports games every year hell yeah i'd make a sports category but there aren't yet yeah, there's awesome. a lot of sports games in the works but there's not 10 but if there's at least like maybe five to ten or something then maybe we can look into expanding out to more categories because that's great celebrate more of of what's going on in it um and probably next year we will be splitting out uh original homebrew and ports that makes sense because there's i think there's enough ports now that have been coming up 
um, that it can be its own category. And they do that in the uh, in the writing for the Oscars. Yeah. Or best original screenplay. Best adapted. And best adapted screenplay. So that's a natural thing. And that would be the top category split. Like best homebrew would split into best original and best port. Yeah. Which just makes sense. And one for insects and undergrounds and helicopters and caves. <laughs> that's right, man. We'll there do. you go. <laughs> Um, so on Friday we'll be doing that and then the Wednesday and then the Friday we'll be playing through those nominations because I Perfect. think it's good to review these games so people, continue can, the... people can see them and I might be able to play the 8-bit ones and the 78, probably not the 7800 ones because I don't think the ROMs ever get released yeah. for the 7800 games they just go straight to cartridge but we'll see, we'll see what's available um, and then the actual award show is on February 1st. Very exciting. All four hosts will be here. A gala event, dressed up, you know, nice background. The whole jazz, all of it. Yeah, we'll good. have uh, phone-ins from the award winners. Hopefully a phone-in from Al and Arena Foot, and, and just really involve the, the community into it. It'll be a fun time. Yeah, it'll be a fun time just like last year, and it'll look better, and sound mm -hmm. better, and even better because we have better equipment this year to, to to make it look good yeah and odd things jumping sure right. <laughs> yeah we'll expand the categories more and more and more more um so that is what's happening then we take a tiny break so i can reconfigure we take a tiny break before the awards and a tiny break after so i can uh assemble thing and then and disassemble everything and get it and get it going again um, so yeah, 24th is the last show, then it's the February 1st, and then we're back again on the 7th, which I think is a Wednesday. Nope, it's a Friday. Awesome. Yep. And, uh, there we go. So thanks everybody for joining, and let's see who was joining us today. Thrust26, VHZC, Azure6502, RC7E, the D-Train37, Trey hey guy, guy, Dan AVC, uh, scrolly scroll scroll. I suppose to Arena Foot. I mean, I'm sure. Uh, Azure. Dianoid 77. Dianoid is always here. Yeah. Did you say Dan ABC? I think so. I think those were the. Oh, Dios Kilos 80. Ah, Dios. And I think. I'm sure there were some other folks that we missed, but uh, if we missed you, we still loved having you here. Yes. Oh, yeah, let's go through the games. Uh, Steam Tunnel Bob, excellent start to a game. Oh man! So... I wish it was continued, like the the um, the carts. Once you find the cart, you get in the cart. But that was just a placeholder. You didn't die. You just go straight. Yeah. That I I hope he continues and puts that in. And that's one I could fuck around with for a while. I don't know how many levels there are, but it would have been it's... interesting to sort of like. I think I think if we would we would have played more, I probably could have beaten we'd... that level four. Oh yeah, we'd map it out and we'd figure out level four. We go, oh that one turns off that, and then we'd figure it out. And we go to level five. So I, I hope he continues on. Maybe the show will spur him to 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 pick that game back up yeah. again. Then we play Pressure Gauge. It's this interesting style. Once you figure it out, Pressure Gauge 2 has got insane potential. Oh my god. We're, we're going to be playing Pressure Gauge 2 again because it's a four-player game. i got to remember to write that down for our, our four-person uh, marathon, whatever it yeah. is going to be next time. Because um, that'll be fun. And uh, Tumble Temple, nice, really simple, fun, wonderful simple game. game. Yep, fun platformer. Sim yeah, and Ninjish Guy, uh, unbelievable accomplishment well, again from VHZC. It's an it's a really cool lineup of games. Given our conversation at the beginning, where you know these are Actually, these yeah. are all what 4K games. Uh, I don't know how the Ninjish Guy is huge. Uh, uh, sorry, it's well, it's, wait, but they're all games that are not pushing the insane yeah. limits, and they're all pretty amazing. Like I'd say that like. Uh, Tumble Temple and Ninja Sky are as good as anything that you could ask for with these things. It's yeah. really nice to get to like play something, and and it and the reason why is it's fundamentals. They're yeah. fun games to play. Oh, Necrobump. That's what I do every time I I announce that I'm playing a show a game on the show. I I say I'm playing this game, and it's like nobody's commented in twelve years on it. It's like I don't care. You know, they deserve yeah. to be looked at again. Absolutely. You know, I've never played them, and probably most people out there have not played these. These great games that deserve another look, and you gotta always give them a try and stay open-minded, and you know you never know when that cool little gem's gonna come out. And plenty of uh, developers have started redeveloping games that I've 
that I've featured on the show and they've taken them to completion. Which is the and dream. It's like, that's that's amazing. And case in point, I don't know if I want to take credit, but thrust with with uh now I forget in the Tank City. Yeah. That one was uh not touched for a long time. We played it on the show and he started uh working on it again. And it's an unbelievable four K game that has so much replayability. It's unbelievable. The one you, you shoot and you can only shoot from behind. Robot, Robot City. City. Not yeah. Tank City. Robot City's awesome. It's got game. tanks, so yeah, I love Robot City. And it's 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 so challenging, but such a simple concept and he just packs it into the 4k nomination for best game that arisen from the grave anybody can um have a game that was work in progress from 20 years ago make an either a new work in progress and it's totally valid if it hasn't been nominated for work in progress or you can finish it and be nominated for all the rest of it and and win any of them so yeah night rider rides the end not that one um there's a massive, massive thread in the Atari Age forms, like hundreds of pages long, about some guy wanted to make a Knight Rider game. Ah, oh, But yes. nothing ever happens with it, and there's just crazy discussion. <laughs> it's it's quite the read. <laughs> Man. Um, but yeah, a... nomination for uh, best game that has risen from the grave. Yeah, it's it's it can happen. It's not his own category, but it can happen. Uh, console overlays. Yeah, we'll get a big... Big oh, Mylar let's thing. do that. So, yeah, Robot City was resurrected and I believe was in the running. I wow. can't remember. I got to look that up cuz it's it was a work in progress that that was resurrected in 2019 that had a new work in progress. He's <laughs> just awake for Godot. So true, man. Wonder when that Godot is going to find his night rider. <laughs> <laughs> let's see, Robot City. Robot City. Robot City. What? Why isn't Robot City on this list? Oh, no. Was it not updated in 2019? Or was it finished? Was you de Did you declare it finished? Oh, no, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Oh, now I clicked on the wrong page. So much stuff is happening. I was happening. looking at the finished games, not the work in progress. There it is, Robot City. So that one was, was, um, was in the running. Oh, so we'll nice. see if it's nominated. And uh, we'll see how it goes for the yeah. work in progress. See what people vote for. It was work in progress, yes. And that one is mm, beautiful. Beautiful game. But there's a lot of good work in progress games. And a lot of good 4K games. There's yeah. A lot of good games in 2019. So I'm really happy and hopefully, we're having uh, the awards and celebrating all these and games. And hopefully 2020 will be even better. I hope so. Well, you know, step by step, though, yeah. man. We'll, we'll keep doing our thing, and you yeah. guys keep doing yours, and try not to get discouraged. Just stay in yeah. your lane and keep being creative and keep making keep your stuff, awesome. man. That's that's all you can do. Yeah. And there's always going to be noise, yeah. no matter what. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is it for Wednesday, and we'll yeah. see you back on Friday with Tanya. And uh, thanks for hanging out with us for a couple hours, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Bye bye.